and show people you could kind of share how you were feeling and then we could kind of mm -hmm. show that foot and uh so they can see it because to remember remember the growth that is coming in is not always growth you're going to see on those two little heel buttresses no it wasn't back. and that's what i was fixated on mm -hmm. i kept looking at them from the rear you know the rear shot and yeah down the aisle way i would keep looking and going those freaking bulbs haven't gone up at all <laughs> no really i was just like yeah why I, are those damn bulbs higher off the floor by now yeah i and i can I totally so, relate yeah, i was so fixated on the rear view that i wasn't looking at the side view yeah that you did uh, okay well we're well I'm we're gonna to share that we're gonna share that um i need to tell the people here on youtube real quick that uh uh what we're gonna what i'm gonna start doing is instead of me just you know spill my guts about everything for hours on end uh nobody gets a chance to present their horse's feet or ask questions or anything like that i don't think that's a good way to start anymore so instead i want to start with everybody else what's going on with them um what's going on with their horse questions they have concerns they have uh anything anything that you need to talk about that you want to know about um if we know we will sure discuss it if not it'll be food for thought and we'll start looking for answers um anything like that so okay so we'll start with janet who i helped yesterday oh my god and I'm, you know it's like sometimes you look at these feet so much like mm -hmm. my girl said you're now obsessed um but like i'm not looking for I, i'm not seeing the changes i haven't learned how to see the changes yeah i need to learn what to look for more in the changes versus just the obvious oh the heels are still really puny yeah you know I need to be able to really analyze the way you do i need to to learn those you know to, to look through your eyes how you look at hooks more you know, and that is just, I think, practice, practice, practice. Mm -hmm. But the more you do it and show us, you know, with our horses, I think the more we'll learn to see it through your eyes. Because until we learn to do that, we can't be as helpful to others as you are. Yeah, I understand that. Um, and, and see, I'm just learning more and more, putting more pieces together, too. Because it wasn't like I just looked at your horse's feet and went, aha. You know, yeah, I, know, I had to really look and think and remember different things. Right. You know, so, I mean, that is part of the learning curve for me. I can I can trim. I can map. You know, I can look at the obvious stuff. But now for me, what I need to learn is how to analyze and interpret correctly. Mm -hmm. And that is my that's where I'm getting stuck. And as we were just talking here, I was thinking, you know, I need to just write down a process of different things I've learned over the years to look at because that's what happened when when I started uh figuring out the mapping was I thought man I want to help other people uh learn to do this and so I sat down and I just write it wrote down every step I'd been taken that I'd never really put together in an official format and of things I'd learned and that became the initial mapping system to try and help people learn to trim. And so while you were talking, I was just thinking, well, you know what? I just need to write down a list of everything you need to look at and check that Thank I know you. so far. Right. And then you could go through that that list. And so 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 Janet yesterday she posted these pictures. Um just a minute here. February and then August. Uh Okay, just a minute. Let me open this in uh open in Messenger. Okay, so we're chit chatting and stuff. And she posted these pictures. They were from February and August. So here they are, here and here. So I started going through them and taking copies of them to try and study what was going on. Because for some reason, Janet, when you post pictures, they show up like that. They're tiny. Oh, really? You I'm know. sorry. I'll have to try to figure out why they're doing that. Yeah. And uh, one thing I noticed is this foot, this, 
I think I think that's the medial side of the right hind. Okay, that on each side of your hooves, each each side is different. Like you know, yeah, you have no two doubt. heels. Yeah. You know, and so you have to take each side different. Now my horses was different too. Um, in fact, his worst foot was the right hind, and the worst heel was the right medial heel. Oh, uh, and so it was super, super trimmed out and uh, weirded out, and it's just now starting to get about halfway decent. But uh, so anyway, so I, I w went through her pictures, um, and I had to take copies of a lot of them to make them bigger and look Sorry. at them, you know, and and so and then of course the it does just that. See, it's so frustrating yeah. <laughs> trying to figure this out. Now, is this Holly's string thing that she does? Wait a minute. Is that what you're doing there? I didn't do that. What is that? What's that? I don't know. I thought you did it. No. Maybe I did it. Okay. I don't have... remember. Is this the February one? No, this is August. Let's see. Yeah, it's Maybe. August. I can see the date. Okay. See, I, I thought the wrong year on there. I have the wrong year on there on the picture. It looks like, but it was August. But I didn't do that because, Lord knows, I don't even know how to do that. Oh, okay. Because Holly has a deal so that she can make the the hoof wall straight, where she somehow takes a string and holds it up here to see where she needs to trim off this piece right here. So, because okay, um, just in case you don't know, because when you're looking at these feet. We we, we don't have, see a hoof picture here, Linda. Oh, okay. Sorry. Duh. New share. There we go. That foot there. So I don't know what that was. That that green line there. I thought you were doing Holly's string technique, um, where she takes a string and she holds it up here and here, and it shows her what she should cut off right here because when you're looking at these feet. Just a minute here. Wait, I getting... think, wait, wait. I think I did that on one of my pictures to show someone what I was talking about, and it must have saved. Oh, okay. I must okay. have done it to show them that, like, you want more of a straight line versus what you've been talking about, that lump in front of the heel. Yeah, the, you'll see it, and the foot will look like this. Right. I think I must have done it showing it to someone, and then I didn't erase it before. It oh, got... Okay. Okay, well, anyway, um, this since we're here, now something I see really good is this very straight hairline. Okay, and even though, you know, it's at, at quite an angle down, it's not not excessively, excessively bad. You're starting to get wall in here and stuff like that. So, but anyway, um, just to throw this in as a reminder, as you're looking at these feet, you can be standing up or, 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 there you'll just kind of notice this kind of shape here okay well that's what you need to take down because what's happening is the wall is growing down you're leaving this area too high and eventually it can start to jam up if it doesn't jam up it starts to flare out and so it could be level like you could turn the foot over and it could be level like uh the same plane all the way around but when you turn the foot over this part of the wall is going to be higher uh than the sole like okay Linda, even if huh if you're, if you're making it like from the bottom like when you're rasping if you're making it level with the sole on the side there wouldn't it be scooped well somewhat yeah yeah it would and that's yeah, okay because your foot is bent well, you know, I was hate. I guess you know, I had an aversion to scooping, um, simply because uh, they were doing it because they thought the foot had a natural arch there, and it was part of the anatomy. Okay, so, so I would not. There's a couple things I wasn't doing. I would not. I tried to make that level and not scooped. But if if it is a little lower, I don't see the harm in that at all. 
you know, do, do you know how sometimes you practice things? It's like pulling teeth to quit. And even if it's wrong, all right, or maybe not right at the time or anything like that. And so there were two things I was doing. One, I didn't want this to be like this, you know? Um, so like uh, on a foot like this, like, like if trimmed like this, if you turned it over, like the foot, let's say the foot, the wall is, is at ground level all the way around the foot. But then when you pick it up and turn it over, um, let's say this part here from here to here is level with the sole and you would have a clean white line. But this area from here to say here, just a minute, I got a cough. Eh. This, le this area from here to here is the wall is higher than the sole. The sole dips up right there. And so if you were to just level the wall to the level of the sole, you would definitely have, if you turn, set the foot back down after you were done, this part here would be uh, arched out or scooped out or, do you, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what happens to me. And yeah. is that a bad thing? No. Okay. No, no, it's just, it just happens because uh, the foot is still distorted internally. And so you haven't got a, a foot that is, let's say, let's say this is, this is the inner foot here. Okay. That's pretty ugly. And um, let's say. Uh, this is the soul that is supposed to grow from the inner foot right here. And so if the foot is not bent in any way, if it's well supported, see, just a minute, is that big enough for you to see or is it too tiny? That's fine. Okay. It's fine on the laptop. Okay. And so, um, let's see. So. So back here, you'd be your heel buttress, okay, growing. And then your wall, we got an invisible wall here, okay, to where we can see internally the sole. Okay, oh, well, wait a minute. Let me undo. Clear, 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 undo. Okay, let's, let's do it like this. Okay, so... The wall is even with the sole here in this case. Okay, the sole is inside there. There's the wall inside. And so if your foot was correct, like this, then there would be no scoop here. All right. In other words, it'd be just like this. And when you picked up the foot, um, the sole right here would be level with the wall. But because this hairline is not supposed to be down like this. It's supposed to be up like this at least. Well, maybe not quite that much, but that's not beyond the pale. All right. These bulbs are supposed to be up here. Okay. So let's say you, let's put even that. Okay. So if this foot was up where it's supposed to be, then there's not going to be an arch in this foot, like um, like when this part of the anatomy of the inner foot gets pulled down like this. Okay, what happens to this part of the foot here? It gets, the heel gets shoved up and this part of the foot gets bent like so. So then, even if your wall here is the same like this, when you turn the foot over, you're going to have dirty white line here. You're not going to be able to get a flat level foot with the wall level with the sole because of the way the internal foot is bent right there. And so um, it's not the wall is not growing down and connecting with the sole in the right place. Um, and you're not getting that uniform sole thickness 
like you would get with the foot that is setting in there correctly and flat with the back of the foot raised up. So you got to remember, um, well, I don't know what you got to remember. Too many things. <laughs> okay. Now, are you kind of understanding what I'm saying here? Yeah, totally. Bit? Hey, and going to Messenger, I just sent you a really the same foot, same view uh -huh. right after I soaked them. Okay. And I, it's an even, you know, I'm starting to think that I screwed up. This is from 22. And the one I just sent you literally, I know is from 23. I just okay. sent it messenger. <clears throat> oh, okay. Okay. I'll look at it here in just a second. And so what we're doing is we're growing hoof wall in here that we trimmed it out from the bottom, constantly taking the heels lower. But when it grows back in, it adds in up here at the top. Where are we at here? Just a minute. Oh. In other words, it adds in up here at the top. It'll add some in here, and then it'll add more, and then it'll add more as the back of the foot is raising back up to where it should be here. And so <clears throat> you won't notice the growth if you're just looking at these little heels here. Because the wall is being added in up here gradually. See, it grows from the coronary band down. But here's the thing. That, that foot is being pulled down and it doesn't want to be pulled down. It is constantly pulling up. So as long as you're not continuing to trim down the heels and you kind of weight them, let them be a little longer here so there's weight, then the growth will stay in the capsule up here. And as the foot pulls back up to where it's supposed to be, this growth that, that is growing down from up here will remain up here. And eventually, all this growth here is going to be up into here. And your hoof capsule gets bigger, your foot gets raised. As the foot gets raised, that bend arch comes out. And then you got this uh, da, 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 uniform sole thickness in here. And the clean white line. First of all, here's another thing, too. When the whole back of the foot is pulled down like this, the horn tubules that should be up here have have been forced to go like that see okay when when all this comes back and is done this horn tubule here should be right here not here and so what you're doing is you're getting the capsule back into unity weight bearing unity and equilibrium with the inner foot so they work and join correctly and perfectly together. And you don't have a deformed foot growing a deformed capsule or a deformed capsule that you or nature or is deforming, pulling the foot into its deformation. So I had an insight into where I am having a problem with viewing these. Oh, okay, good. Okay, so when a hoof grows and we've let it grow for a couple of weeks and you flip it over, you see the wall is above the sole. Yep. So you think in your head, it grew a hoof, but down at the bottom. Because that's yeah. where you see that hoof wall, the, the, you know, the wall is now above the sole. So yeah. you think, okay, it put new growth in at the ground level. Right. Because that's what we see. So is it in actuality putting putting some growth down at the ground level and some growth up at the coronary band? Yes. Because it's it's because we look at it and you're like, oh look, it grew a quarter inch of hoof wall at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So you trim it off and you think, well, nothing happened up top because you don't see it. And you think all of the growth is happening down at the ground. Yeah. And you hear people say, my heels aren't growing. My heels aren't growing. Okay, well, they are growing, but it's it's adding capsule in up here. 
And it's not oh. making its way down here because there is so much pressure on this foot that is pulling up that if you just give it a little opportunity down here by, some, by weighting it so that it doesn't easily, is not easily able to grow out and you're not trimming it off, then that growth, especially if you get a little moisture, that helps too. Um, but regardless whether you do or not, that growth will be encouraged to remain in the capsule up here and well, gradually yeah. add. Yeah. Just to clarify what uh, Janet was saying or asking, the, the hoof wall is not growing at the ground level. It is all just growing from the coronary band and coming right. down. Right. right. Okay. But we only see the overgrowth at the bottom when we right. put it over the trim. But my um, question is, while that hoof wall is growing from the coronary band uh, and it exceeds, it slides down past the sole? Is that what's happening? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it grows. It starts growing up here and it grows down here and it connects with the sole and then they grow down together. And oh. this, see this, this wall this foot is meant to be up like this, not down like this. And so when it's down like this, you've changed all the angles of the horn tubules that are supposed to grow down in one specific spot. So and as down the sole, as the wall is growing, isn't the sole also growing? Uh, yes, but the sole is only designed to grow a certain length and then die off. The, and then wall, the wall exceeds it. Slides yeah, down. the wall grows perpetually. That's why you'll see these horses with these hooves like that. Be sad. Yeah. You see? Um, back up, back up, back up. This is where I'm having some, I, I need some aha moments here. That's okay. Okay, so when I flip the foot over, I see all this growth at the bottom. The sole is maybe, you know, an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch, you know, up in the foot compared to the wall. I trim mm -hmm. off the wall. And I'm thinking all my growth just happened at the bottom and I cut it off. Right. So the sole is growing, but it doesn't grow as much in the same time period as the outer hoof wall. Well, it, it grows at the same rate but it does it is not designed to keep just growing and growing and growing you know how your fingernails can just grow 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 yeah i wish but, but yeah. your skin it grows too but it exfoliates right it right. just doesn't keep getting thicker and thicker so the soul is only designed to grow like three-fourths to an inch before it dies to where the wall can just grow and grow and grow and not die. So that's why we would have flaky sole at the bottom. Yeah. Okay, it just comes off. Yeah, but some sole gets compressed and look can look like live sole and not necessarily be flaky. And it's still dead. It's still dead sole. And you call that retained sole. It's like dead concrete. Yeah. It's insanely thick and insanely hard and lumpy and, mm -hmm. you know, it's, and you know that it's not supposed to be there, but for some reason it, it's there. Did the body put it there to protect itself? No. <laughs> you know, it was like, is it just yeah. because it never came out or is the body putting extra, can it put extra soul in to protect it, the internal foot? When no, it's so screwed up. It's not putting extra soul in. Um, it's, that's just due to whatever circumstances that happened. You know, yeah, I've heard them say that. Okay. Well, those lumps are there. They must supposed to be there. Well, they're not on the real foot. Those lumps aren't on the real foot. You know, those lumps are there because that foot's distorted and growing distorted dist and growing distortion. And it was in the body. You couldn't like, so no one removed the extra soul and it just, kept yeah like i'm dealing with a horse now and it's just like i don't know how much of this stuff to take out am i going to make her super sore if i start taking all of this concrete fake dead soul out and try to find her real soul am i going to make her dead sore 
Yeah, well, you got pictures of that that we can look at here today? Yeah, her name is Karen. I'll have to go pull them up in a minute. But I okay. mean, literally, I'm like, should I remove it or is it there for a reason? You know, okay. I'm stuck on that point. Too. I understand that totally. I mean, I've had all those questions as well. And I can't say I perfectly know any of these answers, yeah. but we can look and I can uh let you know what i've experienced and what so, i just know about the anatomy so far so while well, you have this foot up can you pull up the latest one i have of this foot that i sent yeah. you because i'm yeah. curious to say what your analysis is of the latest picture i have that i okay I screwed up. okay and then we'll show the the pictures i showed last night too even right. though it's from yeah whatever right. um from from the same year when is it what i don't okay, know so this foot is from august apparently august of 22 and the one i sent you just now is like august of 23 for sure because i was soaking them trying to get somewhere okay so i know it was this year and i didn't screw up every once in a while i screw up the year when my camera puts the auto date in i don't check it first oh yeah camera does its own little thing sometimes if i don't remember to check it <laughs> i know how that goes well, in, I can't, you know, whatever. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, what a change. I, wow. Well, you saw it? Yeah. Oh, is that good or bad? It's good. Oh, okay. It's very good. Um, I'm looking for, I'm looking for Karen's hooves. All now, right. your medial heel on the other foot leaves some to be desired, but, but uh, this foot is like great. So much, even way better than what I was seeing yesterday. All right. Um. On. Okay, on on feet that was the wrong date. Yeah. yeah whatever. Uh, Let's I'm see. Too bad at this at times. I wish I was as good with a computer as you were. Okay. Hind so let me see. I have a whole bunch of pictures of these hind soak of what's going on literally now. Oh my goodness. Is, this one's the right hind lateral. I take my pictures in a certain order so I know who okay. is who so I can okay. order them. Okay, one? just a second. I got to take a shot of these. Okay, new share. Okay. Now look. Okay. So so this was actually the foot I thought was better than the previous foot. Yeah. Th this one here. So if we took the previous one and put that here, we'd see tremendous difference. Okay. Look at all the sidewall that has been added into the capsule. Then look at here. If you look at this foot, okay. Do you see this? I'm, I need to annotate. I don't want to mark on these with my regular deal here uh annotate okay okay do you see this this area oh just, wait a minute you see this area right here yeah you know there's a bulge there yeah okay uh notice how there isn't a bulge there anymore there's not the same there's not a bulge I don't know if there's one there now, but it's not like this one here. Okay. See? And also, let me, I, I need to change and and make the, I like to make the pictures the same size. So let me uh, do that. Hold on. Let's see. Clear all drawings. Okay. Just a second. Just a second, and I will be back. Hold on. As much as possible, I like them to be around the same size so we can really tell the difference. Now, there's a bit of a different angle here to where you see more of the front of the foot here. Yeah, I try to get um, but 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 yeah. um we're not seeing any pictures oh yeah i know i because oh, i gotta okay. take a picture right. here um 
it's still there's still a difference um, because definitely you have way more heel in the capsule than you do in this other picture. So let me just a minute. I'm trying to make them the same size, which they wouldn't be exactly the same size because of the different angle. Oh, that'll work. Okay. <clears throat> it's, you know, it's a drag being a perfectionist. That's a kind, I'm a perfectionist as a housekeeper too. Um, and you know how that works out? That's as well. Can't be, huh? Yeah. Well, for me, it works out if I can't be perfect, then I'm just not going to do it. <laughs> oh, that sounds good for me. <laughs> so, let's see. Okay. Uh, Got to find you guys now. Share screen. Okay. Okay. I tried to make them more the same size. They are at a different angle. You're, you're going to, uh, you're going to see way more of the toe here. Like here's the white stripe here. And yeah. here's the white stripe here. But yeah. uh, see, if they're at a different angle, that means that uh, you're not going to see as much of the cartilage here as there actually would be. Okay. So that means that since we can kind of look at the right. cartilage here and it's not much that different in size than what is going on here that your cartilage has probably really, really improved. But there is definitely a difference. Um, da -dum -dum -dum, annotate. I just lost where it was. There it was. Okay. There's definitely a difference in how much hoof wall is here. Okay. This hoof wall here goes about like that. And this one here is going about like that so you've added more hoof wall in here even though they are are at a different angle and yeah i right. mean i can i can just tell the hoof capsule's bigger um the back of the foot is lifted up a bit more um you're doing good you're doing good yeah i see and like well, i, I said what? I just got to keep up with what I'm doing and be patient. Yeah. Yeah. See, this area is getting more mass in there and it is lifting up like it. Look here. The bulb down over here is under here. And maybe if it was in a different position, we might see the bulb lower here too. But the distance from here to here is going to be different. Yeah. See? You haven't got as much of okay. this bulb skin like you got here. So you got more of it coming straighter back like it's supposed to. Um, let me look up that other picture that uh, we did yesterday. Just a second here. Oops. Let me see. Annotate. Let's unclear all, clear all drawings. Let's see, close, annotate, go find those pictures. Just me, F G H I J A C J A C J J J. -J. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. What did I do with the picture? Oh, here it is. New share. Okay, this is the picture I did for you yesterday where we were mistaken. Right. Okay. Um on on the sometimes dates. I think I regress sometimes, you know, in my in how things are going. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, then I think sometimes that just, you know, that just kind of gets me kind of like, ugh, I screwed up. Yeah, it does. I I do the same. Yeah, what? just to be able to get back on track. Yeah. If you get a chance, try and get a picture of the foot now at the same angle. See, now this one here, you can even see a little bit of the bulb over here. 
Okay. Hold on. Yeah. See it right there. And so you can see more of the angle of the cartilage right. and okay. see the angle of the hoop wall, how it comes down and like that. So we're wanting all this to lift back up here, right? Correct. Okay, so on this one, and look at your white stripe here. You can't hardly see any of the white stripe here. Okay. So this is a perfect side angle shot, just a hair of the other bulb. Like what I'll do is I'll come around over until I can see that other bulb and then I'll back up to where I just barely can't see it. And then I get a perfect side view to where I can really see what's going on with this area because this is the area that some, we really want to be looking at. Now okay. there, I can tell from other ways as well. Okay. But um, but pretty much, yeah, um, getting getting the right angle is very important. But also, if you are starting to learn to read these feet, you're going to recognize when they're not at the right angle. But you're okay. still also going to be rec able to recognize certain changes. You know, and so, um, so yeah, so I see this stripe. I know that the camera is more this way. All right, when I just barely got that stripe in. See, it is then, hard to learn how to do these pictures exactly the same every way. Oh, yeah, that's Side why I in particular. Yeah, I wind up taking a lot of pictures here. We'll we'll put these two pictures together to compare them. Just maybe. Come on, Linda. Yeah. Why does that bulge happen in the wall? Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay um my bars my bars were for a long time flared out and my frog back there was very fat and well, i've that... really now i've really now started going after the frog and skinning him up um let me see oh I think that's I... part of it blowing out that way and uh... I, I've and got one horse that on both, like on quite a, well, three out of the four anyways, feet, they do that. And I'd ask the farrier why, and I just got a grunt and nothing. And so I was like, okay, a I'm going to. Because he don't know. Right. You know? Um, okay. Hold on a second. Because I want to get these pictures the same. Let's see. Oh, well, I had that. Never mind. Use that. File, save. It is a bulge caused by a couple of different things. One, if your heel is trimmed out, um, it can push the heel forward, the wall forward, and it will bulge out like that. Two, um, because the heel's been trimmed low and the horn tubules are at a lower angle and pushing forward, it can, it'll bulge. It's about the same thing. Also, if uh, even if you're restoring heels and you're trying to get horn tubules to move back and you're leaving that area too long, um, it'll take the path of least resistance and bulge out. So all those different things. And then like uh, Janet was saying on the bottom, you know, then what happens because all that's pushed out, then the bar is laid over on that side too. And so you got all these little things holding it there. Um so all those reasons, because, um, you know, those horn tubules, they're all supposed to be uh, at a steeper angle and back and growing down and meeting the wall at a certain spot and they're not. And so it's bulging there. Let's see. Oh, seven. OK. Just a minute. Okay, where did the pictures go? Okay. Pictures, there we go. I'm, in case you're wondering what I'm doing here, again, I want to put these two sets of pictures together for us to look at. Let's see. Okay, where did you go? Huh. 
supposed to be under Janet Seven, and you've disappeared on me. Oops. Yeah. What the heck? Oh, there you are. I think. Or are you? Is that you? That's you. Okay. All righty. And then reduce it. And get the other one up there. His back feet. Thank God I have these different little black and white areas. It helps me figure out what the hell I'm looking at. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Front feet are all black. It just drives me insane. Yeah. Same thing for me. You know, trying to label and make sure I got them labeled correctly. I always try to start my pictures on the left, left front, left rear, right front, right rear when I do them with the camera. So yeah. That when I come back home, I know what foot is which without even thinking about it. So I've always learned to take the pictures in the exact same order. Well, that and works. I screw up. <laughs> that works better. That helps you. Yeah, I still I take them all in the same order. I take them in the same order, a little different. I do the front, front left, front right. Hind, left hind, right hind. Oh, and then when it comes to lateral and medial, I always take the lateral pictures first, so I know that. Yeah, I, I mean, start dorsal, dorsal, lateral, the heel, the medial, and then I go to the solar shots. Yeah, I mean, because if you don't, you get home and all the feet look the same, they're all black hair, you're like, oh, crap, what foot was this? Well, and then sometimes I get home and I forgot to do some. Yeah, I've done That's that. That's frustrating. Too. I know. So now I've learned, take the same pictures, take the pictures always in the same order, always, always. And then always when I'm doing the side shots, I always do lateral first. So I know that the first one that comes along, is always my lateral so that I don't even have to question myself anymore because I was screwing up labeling and I still have a lot of screwed up pictures labeled wrong until I figured out I needed a system. I always label the front of the hoof of the magic marker and take that one first and then I know that that whole bunch of pictures belongs to that hoof until I get to the next label dorsal and then it, it's grouped that way. So I have a, a, a starting place. I used to do that, but I just got away from it and just started following a system. And I just figured, see, when I worked in a laboratory, you had to have systems for everything because you worked with thousands of samples. And if you didn't have a system that you could rely on in case something went wrong and know that you always do it this way, always. You could go back and figure out what you did wrong because I had a system. Yep. And if yep. something went wrong, I'd be like, oh, okay. You know, I know that these samples are these. So I figured out if it worked in the laboratory for 30 years, it's going to work on taking these damn pictures. Hey, that's a great way to do it. Well, I had to because you couldn't label a thousand beakers. So you had to work left to right or you had to work right to left. And then you had mm -hmm. to work, you have rows and rows of beakers. So I would work left to right, back row to front row. And I what, always did it. What and kind of things were you studying in the laboratory? Oh, we were just testing samples, but you'd have <clears throat> hundreds of samples to test all at the ah, same time. Okay. So like literally if you screwed up, you know, or you forgot to mark one or two beakers and you'd be like looking at them and you'd be like, okay, I know I have a system that I created for me that I can rely on that I always work left to right with rows of beakers. Let's say there's 15 in a row and I had 10 rows. It was always left to right, back row to front row. Huh. And well, that that's way, cool. yeah. So I created a system for me for my backup fail safe if something went wrong. Uh huh. So finally, when I kept screwing these pictures up, I'm like, okay, time to make a new system. So my system <laughs> is, no, literally, I took what I learned in the lab that worked for me so well and applied it to taking these pictures. So when I get home, because I can't, you know where you're at. I can't label them on the SLR camera. I have to download them onto the computer and then I have to sit there, put them in order of what the pictures were taken in case it, sometimes it, sometimes it just decides to scramble them. Other times it doesn't, I don't know why. But then I get them in order of the picture numbers and then I know that the first, first pictures are, you know, front left. And then the next group of pictures are, you know, hind left. And then I just work my way through and straighten them out. 
because you know having to take them with the camera and then from the camera to the laptop things happen yeah unfortunately on you know my phone sucks at taking pictures for these my phone just does just horrible so i had to go to my old slr camera and then oh, learn yeah. how, to, how to switch them over but i don't you know i don't have the viewer like you have from the top to see mm-hmm. so i you know i take a picture look at it oh that sucks delete it go back take another picture oh that okay and then move on so i have to do a lot of going back and looking at each picture as i go because i can't see exactly what i'm getting so that's why they're not always perfect and mm-hmm. if i'm hot and sweaty and tired sometimes i don't oh, man good you know, taking pictures is is uh, work intensive, labor okay. intensive. You know, washing the feet, taking the pictures, doing all that is labor intensive. You do all that, and then you haven't even started trimming yet. No, you know, no. So I'm like trying to make it so that um, I have less error in my system as I do these things. Mm-hmm. You know, so that I can at least you know count on doing it and getting it right once I've done it that I haven't wasted all this time yeah well good so yeah so I do it now on all of them but it it's just you know like you said it's very labor intensive and everyone's like why aren't we going to take pictures like my girlfriend why aren't we taking pictures every time we do our feet I'm like cause <laughs> we're not well, you come we're- early and do it <laughs> there you go well <laughs> if I can't get the pictures right I'm sure she's not going to get them right yet yeah either. you know what's the point yeah. So I just decided that we do it maybe every two or three trims, not yeah. every trim. That's funny. You, you know, know, I'm like, it's just going to have to work. Yeah. So on this, now look, we have all these pictures together here, the three feet. Okay. Even though they're at a different angle, you could tell that, that the capsule has changed. You know, this was uh, uh, the barefoot trimming See, they're really trying to get that 30 degree hairline. So you can tell that the angle of the hairline has changed. There's more hoof wall in a different way in here. Now, I want you to see something here because you, you'll see this happening. Um, the amount of hoof wall, how, how the mass of hoof wall, you know, in an anatomically correct foot. Now, um, this, okay, so this piece is growing down here and you have it basically like this right but now over here i don't care if it's at a different angle it's still different you have more like this see the difference yeah the amount because see this piece here you eventually got this out of there because these weren't, as this was moving up and adding heel wall and wall into the capsule, and you kept trimming this as this was moving back to stand more upright up here, okay, this this chunk here was trimmed out. See, because it's like I say, um, ta-dum. when you, you got these horn tubules are here, if this was to move back, it would be that long right there. See there? Right. Because what happens when this barefoot trimming, it forces all of these horn tubules to grow more forward. And so they add, they're they adding capsule into the wall down here. See it? And right. so as you bring it back and the foot grows, it's adding capsule into the wall up here. And you're taking this horn tubule that was forced forward over to here because, see, this has to grow down internally. The inner layers, lamina, has to grow down, connect with the sole in a specific spot, and then they grow down to the wall to ground together. But if you've trimmed out the heels and it's set these at a lower angle, it starts forcing forward and it winds up adding this weird amount of wall into the capsule see it there how it's added in right there not supposed to be there you see how if i was to take this piece of wall and straighten it up and put it right here it would this this one horn tubule here would be this long see there and it would be 
kind of like that. All right. All right. So what we're doing as the heels are growing up and as we're trimming the sides and beveling the sides, what's happening is um, these horn tubules. Okay. What happened to you? This horn tubule. No, oh, that's not right. <laughs> okay. This horn tubule that was supposed to be here and grew up into here. See, and it wasn't just that one. It was this one that was supposed to be here, grew up over into here. All right. And it added capsule wall in here. So what you're doing is uh, these horn tubules up here, you allow them room and they they drop back. You come and trim again, you bevel, you allow them room to move and they drop back. You see how the amount of a wall that was added in down here at the toe is getting less and the capsule is starting to conform to the actual shape of the foot. Can I ask a simple question on this about the horn tubules sliding sideways? Mm -hmm. If they are connected to the inner tubules via that, you know, dovetail thing, how do they slide back? Um, when we bevel, how does it, how does, how can they just slide along? Well, they're still connected to that lamina, but the whole back of the foot has been the internal lamina and the foot, you know, the back two thirds of the foot is uh, soft cartilage and fat. So the lamina itself is also bent forward. The whole foot is bent. The inner and the outer tubules are moving, not just the outer one. Right. Okay, because I'm always thinking of just the outer hoof wall tubules moving and not the inner ones moving. And I'm like, wait a minute, how can it just slide across all of a sudden? Yeah, you know, no. Electric slide along the side of the hoof. I'm like, so it's it's the connection of the tubules is actually moving. Yeah, the lamina, internal lamina, the soft tissues of the foot are have been pushed into a position they shouldn't be in and they're forcing the capsule to grow that way but everything in the foot is pulling against that and so if you just give it room to move that foot is pulling it back see because this is just a shell and it's right, also it was just the shell that was moving and not not the inner lamina of the inside of the foot, too. Yeah, no, the whole whole foot has to move. This is why this is not just a matter of growing capsule. It's a matter of changing and removing uh, parts of distortion and changing boundaries so that the inner foot can pull that capsule back. Well, so that the inner foot can is released enough to pull back a little bit to where it wants to be. And then at the same time, it's pulling that capsule back a little bit. And then that capsule is growing from a different position that the foot has come back to. And so then you trim again, and that enables that foot to just pull a little bit more of that capsule back to where it's supposed to be and grow it from a better position and you just this you just keep going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth like this until finally that inner foot finally the capsule starts supporting the inner foot up closer to where it's supposed to be and um actually when the frog stay starts growing then it really starts pushing the back of this foot up okay, and so, so does the beveling of the outer hoof wall, is that what you're saying when you say give it room to move? Yes. Now, if we're just beveling just the outer hoof capsule, to me, that was always just like, oh, it's just going to be the outer capsule that's moving because we're only making changes by beveling on the outer capsule. Mm -hmm. So well, that's what I was getting confused on, you know, is the inner foot also sliding back or is it just the outer capsule wall moving? Yeah, no, the whole inner foot is moving and changing at the same time in increments because okay. see, it wants to be up there because that is the physics of how it's actually physically doing it. Yeah. You know, the mechanics of how that is actually occurring. Because we're yeah. only, when we bevel, we're only affecting the outer capsule. 
yeah but you're you're releasing you re see there's a lot of strength in that foot okay, okay? and that capsule what'd you say you meant the outer capsule is what you're talking about no i'm talking about the inner foot there's okay. a lot of strength and power in that foot itself okay in the cartilages in the in the fat just the way it's made and so the way it's made insists that these bulbs are up off the ground okay and that this hairline is more like this it insists it calls for it that's the true foot and so this is all composed of cartilage and fat and so then you go trimming the heels out and you're forcing this down but the whole time it is pulling and forcing its way up even if you know and that's why if they don't trim the frog and that frog just gets dead and petrified it just hold that foot right there the periopal whole dead and petrified all holds and binds that foot there but the foot never ever wants to be there it wasn't made to be there it doesn't want to be there everything it's composed of is pulling and pulling and pulling on a constant basis back up to where it's supposed to be just like you know the example i give of your nose you know hey you can push it over to the your side of your face for as long as you want but that memory cartilage and that memory fat is just going to make it want to go back to where it was designed to be and so same thing with this foot you know i got i i got a certain amount of fat on my belly unfortunately i can push it in with my finger it is pushing against my finger okay no matter how long i push that in it's not going to give up pushing out and so that is what is going on with these feet they were meant to be in a specific location and this barefoot trimming that is based on a wild horse that distorted and deformed his heels and and not even on that but on that on two people on one man's personal ideal that you know what he thinks heels are the bulb here when he drew his picture okay he drew let me get a different color he said this this is the heel this right here one cm all wild horses have one cm heel and in his picture he shows this as the heel remember i've talked to you about how in veterinary medicine and farriery science how they're always drawing pictures of the anatomy instead of showing the true anatomy because right. the true anatomy doesn't agree okay well same thing with jamie jackson he drew a picture of what he wanted the foot to be okay he drew a picture and he said all the wild horses he studied had one centimeter heels the bulb like hey lady okay right here here you got too much heel here okay like here look what you got here's your bulb right here look at the heel right here we can see that heel it's not that correct we would say that heel's under run wouldn't we yes okay Okay, so on those wild feet, the heels are severely underrun. All right? And and so then when he draws a picture, well, and then come to find out he had somebody else draw it. All right. He when he draws the picture, he even removes that. So that he then says this one centimeter bulb is the heel. And this is the image 
that has been put in everybody's brain that a foot is supposed to look like right there. Horses walking on bulbs down here. And man, once that Emmy just put there, then that's what people see. And that's what they keep trying to trim into the horse. But this is forcing this foot down into a position it was never meant to be. And so, yeah, it was never meant to be that to begin with. That's not the way it was born. That's not the way it was designed. And so, yeah, you're not going to transition it in the long run into something it was never meant to be. See? That's nature. So that's like, uh, you know, let's just go cut the trunk off an elephant because we think it's too long. You know, and then wonder why he can't eat. Right? Okay. See, that's so, the, the stupidity of uh, what they're teaching. So what I see in my personal learning that I really need to comprehend for me to really start doing better at this mm -hmm. is understanding. I understand what's supposed to happen. I understand what it's supposed to look like eventually. What I'm having technical problems with the actual process of how the foot manages to make these changes internally what is actually happening you know like i said i always was like oh we're just affecting the outer hoof wall by bubbling how is that affecting you know that the inner lamina of the one foot and the outer that they're both moving when we're only technically you know how are how is relieving the stress by bubbling the outer wall, allowing these things to happen? You know, what's the process? Okay. Until okay. I understand okay. more of how it's actually happening. Okay. You know, then I think I'll, I'll be a lot better at analyzing because I understand the final, the final product, what it should look like. I understand the wrong product, what it looks like. I understand, you know, the mapping. And I, I mean, I understand all of these technical things, but I'm having a hard time with the anatomy changes. Like, how are they, how is it actually working? How is it, how is what we're doing actually affecting the inner foot along with the capsule? Okay. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. So I, Aww. you know, so I think until I, like I said today, I was just like, well, you know, how is babbling really? making all of this happen uh-huh i don't really understand how us just babbling that outer wall allows all of these things to happen and how is it happening okay you're removing you're removing some of what is holding and forcing the foot into that position like okay if you take it you push your nose over the side of your face correct babbling isn't totally removing your finger but it's kind of lightening up on it and so your nose moves a little and then you're able to remove some of the extra added wall that's been forced into the capsule and so you bevel it again well that's as if you're lightening up your finger a little more see why because what's your nose made out of that cartilage whatever yeah same thing with the inner foot it's made out of fat and cartilage covered with skin and so it's been forced into a position it shouldn't be in and then then it grew it's pre it grew its captor right in that position it once it was deformed or distorted by over lowering the heel and the back of the foot pulled down then all these horn tubules started growing forward and the growth of the hoof capsule is now holding the foot in that position. And so until you come along and remove some of the leverages and some of the, the distorted growth that is holding the foot there, the foot will stay there and get worse. So what the bevel does is it removes 
some of the leverage without totally taking everything away from the foot. And it allows it, the foot has so much strength in it that it can literally pull the capsule into a different position. And then it's growing the capsule from a different position. Um, <clears throat> let me show you something here. Yeah, it's starting to make more sense as you re-explain it. Well, I can understand. It's like, God, you know, this is insane. You know, right? until, until we understand exactly how it's happening. You know, just because we know how to trim doesn't mean we know what the hell we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. No, we want to understand, you know, right. to get knowledge, you get wisdom with everything you're getting. You want to get understanding why. Right. I'm on the why. Working. Right. Yeah. Why? And that's totally awesome. You know, I mean, I can trim everything you tell me to do mm -hmm. down to, you know, whatever, but some of it I get like the wide bars and, you know, the frog taking over and, you know, the periopal taking over that I get. What I always get hung up on then is this whole ability of the, the inner foot. Once we apparently relieve pressure on the outer hoof wall, then it relieves enough pressure that it can pull both things up and back. Yeah. Um, it can pull it a little bit, right? you know, a little bit at each trim. Like, oh, let me find this picture here. And then Let's you see. said, what if in a couple of days it, the bevel disappears mm -hmm. and you're supposed to go do it again? Does that yeah. mean I was still like, OK, why sometimes will it happen that you can rebevel right away? And other times you have to wait weeks until you can rebevel. Oh, well. I, I don't think you'd have to wait weeks necessarily. You I would just dropping back down to the ground real quick. You don't see the outer hoof wall going boop right back down where it was. Yeah, because because uh, other parts of the foot are moving and growing in order to get it. So it, you, it needs to do that again. Um, uh, okay. Let me get get a deal here to annotate again. Yeah, uh, yes. Side of the hoof wall be uh, raised, yeah. leveled, and the other side not. Okay, so so you come in here and you would bevel up like that, all right? And then over the next day or two, it what are we has- looking? Hold on, what are we looking at? Oh, don't I have that on new share? I'm not sure. It's there. Is it there? Okay, go ahead. Okay, are we there? Yeah, I see a little X or cross or something. Okay, so- so look at your horn tubule here. Oh, there we go. Okay. Correct. Right. Um, that horn tubule is actually supposed to be about here. All right. But when the heels were lowered, it was forced at a, instead of being at this angle, when you lowered the heel, it's now at this angle. And because right. it's at a different angle than it's supposed to be, well, first of all, you lower the heel, doesn't matter, the foot still, the inner foot itself, still wants to have, wants to be at the same level, even though you've taken the heel out. Okay? And so it's still pulling up and out. In fact, it's the same motion as when you take your shoe off. It's pulling up, up out of the back of the capsule. it's That's the force that's going on there. That foot is wanting to pull up and back. But you set the capsule itself at a lower, at a lower angle and back, and you've changed all the angle of the horn tubules to where, uh, okay, you know how some shoes don't have much, much heel and you, could, you can slip them off easy? Correct. You know? but some others have more heel and not as easy to get off. So, yeah. so you've got a foot that's wanting to come out the back, but you've got a capsule that's got less heel and it's literally uh, got the same mechanical force as when you're pulling a shoe off a foot. And in fact, the same force as when I'm pulling a capsule off one of these feet, because this is just a shoe. That's all it is. And so, so the foot wants to be up and back, 
but the capsule has been put in a position to where it's being pulled down, behind, and forward in front. The same exact uh, mechanics that go on when you take a shoe off. And so, and this is constant, constant, constant pressure on this foot. And so this, this horn tubule that was like this, but now you've lowered the heel and now it's, it's forward. It's forced to grow forward more than it would normally. And so it adds more capsule into the foot like in this form of a shape. And in fact, um, I've seen them to where the horn tubule that's here that should have been back here can be clear up here. This horn tubule can be clear up at the toe. See there? Yeah. And so, so it is, and you'll see, if you see white feet, you'll see tinges of red in there. That's because it's tearing on the lamina. That it is so, uh, so much pressure, so much inflammation, and there is literally bleeding going on in the foot as well. So are the inner lamina that are hooked by the tongue and groove effect being pulled forward along with these outer ones? Yes. Okay. And there'll, there'll be disconnection as well. Okay. You know, like, like there'll be disconnection from the soul where it's supposed to grow down and meet with the soul here. Okay, it'll be disconnected and forced forward. And that's why you can't get a clean white line there. Because in order to get a clean white line, the horn tubule internally has to grow down, meet with the soul in a specific location where they marry. And then they join and grow down to the ground together to a certain degree. Then, you know, the spouse dies <laughs> and, the, and the wall continues, basically. Okay. Um. Uh, so so basically the outer capsule is strong enough that it's pulling the inner lamina with it. Mm -hmm. It's strong enough to do that when it when we when we change the shape of the hoof capsule. The outer wall lamina are strong. They're pulling the inner one with it. Yeah. Now we can't. We can't affect the inner foot. We can't do anything to it. So the only thing we can do now is try to figure out a way to weaken the hold on this whole process by affecting the outer capsule by beveling and releasing some of the hold it has and letting the inner foot start pulling back again. Yeah. And the inner foot is pulling all the time anyway. And so it's and then too, see, it's not just the lamina here. But also, since you have lowered the heels, the whole back of the foot and the frog is also forcing and holding everything right there. Okay. So it's a combination of all these things that has forced this foot into a deformed and de distorted position internally that it absolutely was not meant to be at. And because it's not meant to be there because you're forcing all this down and it's it's bending the foot in the middle and shoving the internal heels up and 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 then creating all this this uh uh Oh, uh, tearing and pulling against each other. See, they're pulling in reality, they're pulling in opposite directions here. And so, so as the heels rise, okay, that also loosens what's going on in this area here. So everything's pulling from this area back here. And so that's another reason, not only are, are the lamina themselves pulling back but uh everything in the foot is pulling back so so when you just give it some room it'll just ah uh, say and the internal foot will move the external capsule moves a little you come in you bevel it again you come out in a couple days it's like you didn't bevel it because it just relaxed that foot was able to pull it back where it's supposed to well towards where it's supposed to be at so the same time picture of the really you know in front of that to the toe you have all uh -huh. those wheels lined up are they literally getting wider and spreading out when this is happening that's happening too 
because see uh, the tubules also get compressed and you'll start to see other colors when a foot has really been trimmed out it affects the pigmentation of the of the capsule and you'll start to see different colors appear even so in the wall tubules have all been made skinnier by the compression yeah i'd say compressed right and then when we do this they're actually allowing them to like open back up to the size they should be yeah and it wouldn't even surprise me if some of them up in the coronary band some of the papillae have been choked off and aren't even growing some of the tubules you know well, that wouldn't surprise me and so it, all in all as all this is taking place you're growing heel you're you're restoring the frog um it's lifting the back of the foot it's um you're giving it room to move here you know you're also working with the bars everything there's a little bit of everything is allowing that foot to pull everything back to where it's supposed to be and a good example of this um just a minute here was an experiment i did that i've that i've shown before just a second here uh clear all drawing let me get this picture let me get rid of annotate pictures today has been very good for me oh good good well thanks for thanks for pushing me on explanations because it helps me too you know i want too. i i want people to understand you know and i want to understand it better as well so let's you see mean, you know i can trim out you know i can trim anything you tell me to do in any way you tell me to do it that i don't have a problem with i'm still like i told you i'm just still lost in the actual how is it all coming together and working yeah and how we are affecting the inner foot so much yeah by what we're doing to the outer foot and how are the two working against each other and then how are they working with each other yeah see all great questions that that you have verbalized that that other people want to know too you know, or maybe even things they haven't even thought about. Right. You know, and so, you know, you're being able to understand is vital what we're talking about here. Um, I want to talk about these things until I can explain them better and you can understand them better and also be able to share with others uh, what your understanding is. Now, the other okay. people that are here, what do you guys do you guys, are you following this like I am now, or do you still have questions? Makes sense to me. You know, because we have a, how many people here? 13, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just wondering if other people are like kind of where I was at, or like I can do it, but I don't exactly understand what I'm doing to it. You know, how is it affecting the foot and how are these changes actually happening? yeah so i'm sure there's going to be other people out there that are trying to wrap their brain around what i've been trying to wrap around for a while now you know i i spent so much time learning the trim learning the mapping learning well better at taking pictures and learning the anatomy so now i'm up to the nitty-gritty the hard stuff which is actually what is going on inside this foot yeah you know, and I wasn't happy with just learning the trim and learning the anatomy. That was just like a stepping stone for me. Now I need to know what you know. Like, that's how great. Is it all happening. You that's know, great. I and don't think we can explain it or teach anyone until we're at at least where you're at now. Because we just don't really have a, we can't explain it because we don't really understand it. You can tell us what to do but we have to be doing it for a while and learning for a while before we get to this point where we can understand why and how. Right. Yeah. I've worked hold really on a second for it. me. Go ahead and talk. I need to talk to my husband real quick. No, I just said I've worked really hard to get to this point. So now I've got to really start working on all of this, 
theory, not theory, but mechanisms of change is how I'm thinking of it. And what the mechanisms of change are, you know, because I'm pretty good with all the other stuff now. And now I, I really need to wrap my brain around this stuff. Yeah, so, that's okay. great. For me, it was more, I can see where the horn tubules are in the wrong place. And I can see that the, uh, I can see some of the issues. It's what exactly do I do to make a change, the correct change in that hook? That's my, my issue is like, okay, I can see what's wrong, but I'm not really sure what I have to do to correct it. Or understand why you're doing what you have to do to correct it. How well, is that change doing it? How I kind of understand, understand, like when Melinda explains it, it makes sense, totally makes sense why you would do something like that. And I'm just not sure what to, what, what correction to apply to what issue. You know what I mean? Yeah. I yeah. Do know what you mean. Like I have a horse, I have a thoroughbred who's got these, uh, this, her, her uh, buttresses are her laid right out flat. She's very, very wide in the heel. So I wouldn't mind, I tried to, um, and she's very, very low. Like she's right on her bulbs on the ground. She wears her heels out constantly. There's nothing you can do. Her bars were laid right over so that they were, were like melded right into the sole. So you could hardly tell at first which was bar, what was sole. I'm having a heck of a time to get that horse to grow some heels. And, and I haven't touched her heels in a year and a half. But it's just normal wear and tear and walking around. She just w does not. I'm, I know they're growing from the top, but it's, she's wearing it off as soon as it's whatever's growing. And I just, I can't get heels on that horse. And I can't get those uh the buttresses the heels to come back in even though they're false heels to come back in and narrow her back for hook she's the she's the total opposite of contracted <laughs> so I, my issue is so what do i do to make those heels start coming back in where they're supposed to be well see when, when we're done here we would look at that foot yeah because that that'll see. be very interesting to see too okay uh, sure i can send you the picture and whenever yeah. you have time that'll be good to I've no, seen so many of those feet. So many. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. And it seems to be thoroughbreds' feet are so different than quarter horse. I think it's because they're trim different. Yeah. Oh, for sure. This one was a racehorse, so she. Yeah. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the yeah. racehorse thing is horrible. Yeah. yeah. But okay, like me, like I kept looking at the heel bulbs on the ground. They're not, you know, they're not lifting up. But like yeah. Linda said, I am getting some lift in the back, which eventually, if it continues, will start pulling the buttress back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it will. Because So what I, are the steps that she needs to take on these types of hooves to encourage that growth now that we're trying to get to pull those buttresses back? You know, mm -hmm. is, is the white line, you know, is the horse really round? You know, is... You know, the pillar, you know, we, we do the, the dorsal length versus the pillar length, you know, trying to keep that in check. How fat are the frogs on this horse? How much of those laid over bars should she take out? Yeah. Yeah, you know, see, all that stuff. Right. But, I mean, like, you're afraid to do and you're afraid not to do. Yeah. Like, well, want the horse to be I so still insane. experience all that, by the way. I'm, I'm sure you do. It's like. You know, if the horse is that flat and she starts taking out that bar and doing some things, will it, and taking down the frog, if it's really fat, will the horse even have a harder time just navigating life? Yeah. Because as their feet get distorted to a great degree, they adapt, you know, uh, right. so that they can still function. And so um, in this corrective trimming, you're taking away some of the support of the distortion. And I think a lot of us are just terrified to do that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so it has to be in increments, you know, but um, then you have this situation here on this experiment I did in 2020 okay. when I was learning about the periopal, which, you know, I have backed up on this periopal thing because... I have just, you know, thanks to everybody submitting pictures and stuff like this, could not do it on my own. 
but discovering that um if you don't have some elevation to this foot the foot because i keep telling you that foot wants to be you see this foot here that's where the foot wants to be right that's where the foot was designed to be so you can't just go cutting but the thing about it is it has to be in unity with the with the hoof capsule because it is the back of the hoof capsule that supports and keeps it where it's supposed to be it is that support okay so when you go trimming the heels out it is forcing this inner foot to be in a position it does not want to be and the whole time it's pulling 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 back and so what happens then if the heels are trimmed out and you don't have any elevation um and you remove that periopal your heels will contract been holding it together basically yeah yeah it's, like, it's just kind of like this big band-aid yep holding that foot together yeah like uh like um you know how how they have those big metal bands that they band lumber and heavy objects with? Right. You know? And you and, cut it. Yeah. So that's what that's like. It's holding that foot together. And so um and and, and so like I did this experiment when I found out or had an inkling idea that something's going on with that periopo in the middle of the bulbs okay and so that. that's the first time i said that word today i'm so proud of myself i think <laughs> <laughs> so you can't just wallop it all out yeah but Unless in this ready. yeah in this case i did um and it worked out because I had been growing in heels for so long, I actually had a lot of hoof capsule there. And, a, and I had elevation to the back of the foot. So it didn't want to stretch up as much when the periopal band-aid was pulled. Yeah, instead it did just the opposite. It, look how it released the cartilages. See how they're rounded there? Yes. This is day, uh, let's see, that was 1221. This is uh, 1223. So two days later, I had him in a boot with a bag and conditioner. That's why the periopal is that color. And then this, then I trimmed out some more that day. And then this is the, the last day. See how much the hoof capsule itself moved. Look how the heel stood up. Because... Um, it just happened to work out that way. If I wouldn't have had as much uh, elevation, it could have turned into not good. It would have okay. just ripped open in the back. Well, that or my heels just would have contracted. It curled in. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that we're all afraid of that new phenomena. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, okay, Linda, I've sent you a bunch of the pictures of that. It's a back left foot. Okay. Of that thoroughbred, whenever you have a second. Okay. We will. Sorry. The periopal the peri has become one of those. Yeah, I removed some of it on top of the frog. I removed some in the center of the frog. Mm -hmm. I, if I see some real heel, actual heel, I scrape a little bit off of there, but I don't screw with it over the bulbs right now because I don't have enough elevation and I don't yeah. want to go berserk. Yeah. Exactly, because I'm telling you, them bulbs want out. <laughs> I know, and I'm like, I, I haven't you know? removed from the bulbs yet, because I know if I do at the spot I'm at, that I'm going to create a whole nother mess. So I've been removing periopal where I feel it's safe to move, that it won't release immediately out the back of the foot and blow out. Yeah. So I've yeah. been trying to learn what periopal is safe to remove when you don't have enough hoof capsule versus what just don't touch it yeah you know and so far it's been working for me you know i haven't had any like major releases i haven't had any splitting tearing anything that looks scary so i've just been taking it off the frog i've been taking it off the center of the frog where it really fills in i haven't messed with between the heel bulbs unless it's 
grossly hanging out by like half an inch and it's just dead stuff. And I just take some of that out, but I have mm-hmm. not peeled it off the heel bulbs. Oh yeah. You know, cause, cause you're, 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 oh. and it will le- it will loosen on its own. Like, okay, look what here, look here, periopal, very tight right there. Right. Right. Okay. So the bulbs released a little bit, but look at the little periopal flap it's leaving there. Right. It dried up and let go, you know? And so, uh, you know, but the, there was enough hoof wall there uh, for it to change. So many, so much stuff happened to this. I mean, look at the dish in the wall, how the dish came out. Look at the heel that's run under run, how the cartilage lifted it all, lifted it back. See, that's that shell. You know, this thing is alive. And, and it, it is, this foot is so powerful that it can literally pull that capsule back into shape. But okay, so the, the foot you're looking at right now with the little cursor, what did you do between that picture and the one on the right? You took out what periopal? Oh, I'll show you here. These are different pictures here if I got to find it. Okay, so. Because you had elevation at that point, so you did have the ability to take some out. Yeah. Um. Let's see. So, so you see here. This is just pictures I put together of that piece that grows okay. between the bulbs. Oh, thank you so much. That's okay. Thank you. Really appreciate that. I ain't got some lemonade. Just a minute. Man, I needed that. Okay, now we'll just add some tequila to it. No, <laughs> just joking. No, that'd be good. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I like to have a margarita now and then. Um, okay. So I'm saying if I, I can find that picture, all these are having to do with that experimentation. Okay. So this is what I did right here. Um, you see how I took that out. I okay. Did. But, uh, more than that. Okay. So the first day, this was the, um, the first day, this was the 21st, I took some of this out. By the 24th, I'm taking it way out like that. And just really getting into it. Yeah, this was the 21st. And I put the boot on. Did you use on. a knife to do that? What? Did you use a knife to dig that out? I, I think I used either the grinder or the Dremel. God, I wish my horse would let me near him with that shit. <laughs> cartwheels you know it's not good okay so see okay so um this is the 21st and uh this was the 24th by then i'm taking the whole frog down you can see that i'm down to uh the inner layers of the frog but really getting in between the bulbs there and look here's what you notice look how full this looks right here doesn't that look full yeah It really wasn't. This is what's really going on right here. These bulbs are pulled in like that. And then this little piece of periopal just grows all over the top of it, you know, and binds it all in and makes it look like one little cute unit. When in reality, that ain't what you got at all. You see how the heels are curled in? This is all, you know, um... So how do we know when it's safe to take that little piece out and, and the rest of the periopal, the collateral groove exits and all that kind of stuff? How do we know when we can do that? I do the exits now. Uh, how do we know when we can do that? <laughs> That's another whole hoof chat, right? <laughs> okay, how do we know when we can do it? When we send a picture to Linda and she says, it's time. Yeah, but then if I'm wrong, I I know. Okay, so here's here's what one way I did. Remember, I had the horse in a boot soaking his foot in uh, D.F. Crosley's hoof paste. Now, this is frog that grew back later. What's that? 12, 24, 3, 16, three months later. Um. Now, this is when the whole frog moved 
okay? And it moved the whole corium, the frog apex and all. Because you, okay, this whole frog, everything is pushed forward. This is not the actual true frog apex. This whole frog, the corium, it's like a big sock. It's been totally moved over the foot up the foot um and so when it he never was sore through all this but i come out there one day and he's got this big bruise looking thing and the frog apex has literally pulled back because all of this was pulling back and so all this periopal you'll see lots of weird changes when this frog is moving because this frog the frog your frog corium is distorted your frog corium is pushed forward into a place it's not supposed to be. So everything on the bottom of these feet start moving. You know, when you go from this to that, see, even that got a little bigger there. Um, this is me in 2012. You can see the difference in the foot. Look at look at how the bulbs are on the ground, forced to the ground. Um basically the true frog's been stripped out this is 11 months after i started regrowing heels and of course i should have made that bigger i hadn't learned to to size them yet again i just kept because i had grown in heels for a long time i kept trimming the stuff out between the bulbs and that's when i started really seeing that the whole foot had been wrapped and forced and twisted in See, before that, it looks like like this right here, like this foot. That looked like a, a good foot to me, but in truth, it was like this. See, I knew because the cartilage was like this that that wasn't the true foot. Even though I liked what I was seeing on the bottom, see, that don't look bad, does it? No, and most people would kill just to have that. Yeah, but see, I knew because the cartilages were twisted in or so small. That's not cartilage. This is more like it, but that was still distorted. And so here's one thing. Okay, like this was uh, 228 12, 2012 when I was still trimming the heels out, these are false heels. He kept making his own heels. It was such a pain. No matter how I tried to get that 30 degree hairline, I'd come back out and he'd just wrap the foot around the back. I didn't know that was what was happening at the time though. Okay. You saw that one just recently, that whole photo series, which was so mind blowing where the lady, the hoof heel was completely yeah one day yeah he made heels that just blew me away well see that's that foot wanting to be where that foot wants to be where it was built to be where it was born to be where it was designed to be where it was created to be where it, whatever you want it to be it ain't whatever you want it to be it was made a just like our feet our feet the anatomy on our feet is a certain way you know we can't just switch it around to to like the chinese did to them poor women you know or like look at all the weird stuff that goes on in the world like um over in africa where where these women traditionally will just keep putting rings around their neck till their neck gets really long that's bizarre too and do you know there was an american woman that did that she finally died oh well, yeah probably couldn't swallow shit yeah so, you know, this foot looked good to me. See, I had it measured out and everything. But the more I learned about the cartilage, the more I'm going, something is not right. And so, but look, I had elevation. See, I've been growing in heel for a long time. And this is also why when you look at this foot, the bars are curved. Because everything's bent. And it's pushing the bar corium up and it's making the bars bend. Um, so this frog looks like one one tight unit, but it wasn't. The bulbs were wrapped in under here. Then this is that periopal rope 
that grows between the bulbs that stitches together. You got periopal growing over the whole frog. You know, just some of the some of the differences my horse's feet have grown going through trying to figure out what is going on, what's a true foot. You can tell those cartilages have wanted to be up there for a long time. You know, um, again, so I just kept cleaning it out. See, I mean, how different is that? Look at that. That's just crazy, crazy, crazy. Then we're going to here, then what here. You know why? Because the frog stay that grows between the bulbs is the, all, Bracey Clark, he named it. He also called it the bolt. So until your foot gets where it's supposed to be, and then you allow the frog stay to establish in that spot, you your foot can be all over the place. But this is what we, this is one of the main things that we look at here is these cartilages to tell where the foot is at. You know, um, like here, this is more the natural shape here. Uh, and you can see, but I may not have realized it at that time. Um, anyway, it wound up changing over the next several days, probably because due to the weather, you know. So, criminantly, um, different things happen when those heels open up. You got this number. I did not trim down to blood. These heels were wrapped around and covering this up. And so as the frog released, as I just kept trimming the bars down, this opened up and it had been covered up for years. So there was no soul growing there. So this just opened up and uh it's just got super 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 thin sole see i never trimmed it down i don't trim out the seed of the corn all right i i don't um uh all i ever did was just change where the bar was and keep the heels and they started uncurling look at the look you see how that's pink Thin sole, thin, thin sole in there. And again, I did not trim that out. This whole foot was moving. Okay, look at how curved the heel is. Look how uncurved it is here, how it uncurved. So if so, one of us were to see that, we'd probably freak and think we just screwed up without knowing what's going on. Yeah, yeah, you would. Um, there was one one day where... I just went and I just trimmed the bar normal and uh, it just had this really weird thing. Just a minute here. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, I was just trimming it, except for taking this stuff out and trimming down the frog. I was just trimming normal. And then the foot just started opening up. Well, I went. And I was so surprised. Yeah, when I come out and I saw that weird bruising, you know, uh, I, I was concerned. I would have been, yeah. Um, but, but here's the deal. That corium is like a big sock, like a big, Dr. Scholl's gel filled sock. And so it's all been forced into a position it was not meant to be in. And so as you are releasing that frog, because you know they say don't trim the frog, right? And right. so it gets hard and dead and it just binds the foot there. So as you are getting that frog alive and it's able to move and pull back. Well, it's connected to the, the rest of the corium. It just pulls all of it back, too. See? Pulling it all back. It's like pulling your sock up. You ever had a sock that just kept wanting to slip down in your shoe? Right. You know, that's what it's like. 
only it's a living sock. See? So here, just see, 2012, 2016, 2021. This is when I was still uh, taking a lot of this stuff out between the bulbs, which wound up being uh, periopal. Now here, it, it had uh, healed up some, but like I said, he was never sore on that. But you can see where the where the apex of the frog was and how it has moved back because you see all this was pulled in like that. And so as this is coming undone like this and like this, it's pulling your whole frog back. Well, your frog corium is connected to your soul corium in here. Everything's being pulled back, everything. So, so those soul, the soul tubules that were probably totally smushed and so tiny that they couldn't grow anything now have opened up because they yeah. were released. And now they're pink and they're trying to grow again. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very thin in there. Now here's the back foot. So, you know, started doing the same thing to the back foot and found out that I uh, had periopal frogs on the back feet as well and stuff um see i'd always looked at this wondering and i'd seen it do weird things wondering what it was why it was doing that now in a sense too it is the frog stay because this is just skin the frog stays right on the other side okay so it's easy to just start doing it an interchangeable thing with them but we know it's periopal skin because it will turn white when it's wet. But then it'll go, when it's real dry, it just turns dark again and it'd be the same color as frog. So are you saying the in that groove, the um, frog stays under it or the, the frog stays forward of that and into like the fat part of the frog back there? Yeah, it's forward of that. This is a periopal that is only supposed to cover the outside of the foot right. and the back. It's not supposed to be sucked in between the bulbs and growing over the frog. Or okay, so it, what it can do is it can totally take over and become the frog stay. You can have a periopal frog stay with no real frog growing. Okay. Uh, which is what I found. Which, which is, is what, what most of us have. Yeah, probably. This is old, old pictures. Anyways. Okay. Well, it's Greek to me. Okay. So, uh, okay. Flat well, feet. anyway. Does that Flat help a little? Yo, know, that helps a lot because it's, it's just helping me more and more understand where things go when they're pulled the wrong way. Like, where do they end up, you know, yeah. what's on top of them and how, how things are being, you know, like compressed to a point where they can't function anymore. The yeah. In particular. Yeah. It's like grass. When you cover grass up, it quits growing. But then if you uncover it before it totally dies out, uh, which right. I haven't seen anything on these feet that totally dies out. If you can get it uncovered, it starts growing again. Well, I think um, her. Yeah, yeah. So um, let's see here. Just a minute. We'll just kind of look at uh, inner foot here a little bit. Okay. Okay. Is it time so for a break pretty soon. Oh, sure. We can yeah. do that. <laughs> we can do that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's take a break for like uh, 15 minutes. And okay. So here's your sock. Okay. This moves, all this moves. You know, if this whole thing gets forced forward, it's going to affect all of this, pushing it forward. And so then you release, then the dead frog grows. You know, don't trim the frog, just take off the tags. And you wind up with a petrified frog holding the whole thing there. Well, then you start trimming that frog. And of course, your periopals right here. These get totally wrapped. What did you say? 
I see a whole bunch of pictures. Are we supposed to be looking at one in oh, particular? Oh, sorry. Wait a minute. Eh. I'm not sure which one we're looking at. That there one. Thank you. So this is just a big rubber sock, you know, and uh, it can be moved around. It can be, the these horn tubules, like your bar grows up here and lays over the soul. It'll choke your soul out. So all of this, all of this, let me see if I can find a better picture. Come on. There's a capsule. Okay, we'll just do this. All of this here can be twisted and wrapped into here. And then your bar, this can be covered over. And you can have a whole false looking capsule foot thing going on. And so these on my horse's foot were cut. This was at the actual heel sole in the heel here was covered up. And the, the configuration of the capsule was such as it came around and it made this part look like it was the heel in the sole in the heel. So when all this started coming unwrapped, and all this frog started pulling back. Then when it, when it came off, when that wall uncurled and came and the bar and everything came off of this part of the sole, there was very thin to no sole there. And so it had to grow in. So, um, so now here, I'll just show you the last picture. Uh, I took of that. Hold on, and then we'll take a break. Just a second here. I'm lost. Okay, close out some pictures. Man, I got ton, tons of pictures open here. Okay. Uh, Facebook. Facebook. Wait a minute. Everything's in my way. Let's admit. Yes, Janet. J A N A T nine. Okay. Uh oh. Well, I hope I didn't close out the Zoom meeting. No, we're still here. Okay. Um. Let's see here. Okay. I gotta get on Facebook again. Um, well, of course, my, my pictures didn't post. No? No. Well, that's depressing. Too many of them? Probably. So we'll take a break and I'll post them and I'll show you his foot most recent. Okay. And then we'll look at who's, whose foot we're going to look at that sent me pictures. Yeah, it was mine. Okay, and Brandy sent something, pictures too. Brandy, are you there? I am horribly ugly frogs. Okay, <laughs> well. Horrible. And, well, I, I'm just looking now at your picture, and I just see the very thing going on. I was just describing about how the whole bulb just get wrapped around the back of the foot and forced down the center. I'm really well, seeing thought, that. I thought you might like that. I don't, but you know. Yeah, uh, no, I don't like that. I uh, <laughs> I didn't like it on my horse when I realized it was going on, and when I see it on other people's horses, I I I don't like it either. It's just a uh, uh, what happens when they're incorrectly trimmed. So so, but at least we know what's going on because the rest of the world don't have a clue. You know, um, people don't like to hear that. How come you're so special? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I could rather be doing something else today. I'll tell you what. Okay. So uh, let's take a 15-minute break. Uh, it's 134.
uh, meet here at about uh, 10 to. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, bye-bye. Okay,
Well, I'm back. Is anybody else or is it just me? I must be alone. I'm here. No, I'm here. Me too. Okay. I'm here. Yeah, I just had the best sandwich. Yesterday, uh, I made this garlic bread. <laughs> we'll turn it into a cooking show. I made this, well, see, so I'm cooking at this hunting lodge. And uh, I make this garlic bread out of, you know, that that Italian bread. You just put it in a toaster and kind of lightly toast it. But then you take a piece of raw garlic. And because the bread is toasted and kind of rough, you, you can just take the garlic and and it like grinds into the bread. And then I take like a stick of butter and smear it over that. So I had some of that leftover garlic bread and I thought, man, I'm going to try not that on a sandwich. Man, it, that was the best sandwich. Ham and Swiss cheese on that garlic bread was awesome. No tomato. Uh, no, I didn't have any tomato, but that would have been made it even better. <laughs> do you ever do the roasted garlic where it's just smearable? No, I've never done that. I'll have to try. Oh, that sounds oh, wonderful. It is awesome. Makes your kitchen smell good too, but wrap it up in foil and steam it in the oven. Uh-huh. Oh my God, it's so good. Oh, then you could just smear it on the bread that way. Smear it on the bread. Yeah, that'd be awesome. It's easy to do, but I was just thinking if you're doing that and you like garlic that much, make yourself go get some big heads of fresh garlic, good mm -hmm. garlic, and then wrap it in foil a couple layers so it steams it. Okay. I will I will do that. I've never done that. I have to look I'd have to go look how long and at what temperature again, but then you take it out and you just literally squeeze it out of each of the clove oh, skin. Yeah. That'd be I'm gonna do I'm gonna do that. That'd be it's really good. So I, good. I love garlic. I put it in everything. I do too. So I didn't know if you did the, the garlic that way yet. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Okay, so um you see this picture I got up here with the foot yeah. and the and and the uh capsule. One of my favorites. You know, that capsule is just a shell. And that foot is way stronger ultimately than the capsule. The only thing that allows the capsule to bind and hold the foot is that periopal skin, which is is the most amazing material on these feet ever. And so then you look up here in the corner and you see uh, you see here outlined in pink. That's the whole foot. But you see how much of the foot is soft cartilage and fat and can be moved around all over the place. So. When this back of the foot here, now you can't really see the actual way the true formation of the back of this foot is, um, the angle I took it. If I had it to do over, I'd do some different things so you could really see the definition of uh, the coronary band here, which I got another picture. Hold on, that kind of gives you an idea. Oh, well, I can just go right to it. Hold on. See here? And even here, I still got too much of the dorsal wall in. This is before I'm learning to come back here and keep coming till you almost see the other bulb and just get a full side view. But I want you to see this piece of the coronary band here that grows the heel buttress how it sticks out from behind. See there? Then your heel buttress grows here. Now, uh, this is so easily moved. The only thing that keeps it in its position is the correctly grown heel buttress. Now, all this is cartilage and fat. So when you trim the heel down and it pulls all this down. It's like squashing this. It is, it's like squashing it. And it just, it's not supposed to be squashed. It will want to move up to where it's supposed to be. This part here gets wrapped around like so. And the foot, this can all get wrapped around and compressed in there 
to where your hoof capsule is only this big. And then your hairline, you know, can be pulled way down, not all the time, but like on my horse, no matter how I tried to get that wild horse looking foot, you know, put out by Jamie Jackson, no matter how much my horse refused to have it. And he, and I just realized this here not that long ago, what was going on, you know, that hindsight, in hindsight, you understand things you didn't understand at the time. I kept trimming those heels down, but he kept having heels. Well, that's because it was just wrapping that foot. That foot wants to stand up. And so as the foot pulls up, it's pulling. When you look at the shape of the, of the cartilages, they're naturally rounded. And so it's just taking the direction of, of the foot itself, which is it's curling around back in here wrapping into itself like a scroll so so that's the same foot right here and so two-thirds of it you see all these horn tubules here okay ideally your hoof capsule or your your inner uh like you have your outer tubules and then they go inward right here to where the lamina is and then then the outer tubule and the inner tubule or uh, inner lamina, they're in alignment here on that hoof capsule. And so if they wind up being up here, that's because this foot has been crushed and pulled down. And all these lamina here that are like this are now crushed and pushed forward like this. So that's why the wall is growing forward like that. And so again, then what are we doing? We're relieving things so that all of it can start to go, release the foot can go back up to where it wants to be. Okay. All right. So, uh, okay. So let me go to Facebook and get the pictures. Some of these. And... Let's see. And we're gonna look at yours, right? Who's who's who all sent me pictures? Uh I sent you some. I'm not sure. Uh okay, Marsha. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so Marsha, we'll look at yours first. And then Ann, I see Ann Bannert sent me some pictures, and Brandy sent some pictures. We'll look at those two. So Okay, let me uh, get the share in here. Ah. New share. Okay, so now refresh our memory on this horse and what's going on. Okay, this is a 14 year old thoroughbred. She okay. was raced for seven years and then she was the brood mare for seven years and we got her about uh, a little over a year ago of march and uh she's been like flat no no heels whatsoever and okay. so um i've been trying to uh and and flared a lot of flaring mm -hmm. unhealthy wasn't well maintained so she wasn't in very and she was in like just had had a foal so we got the foal at the same time so the foal was five weeks old mm -hmm. and uh so she she wasn't uh well fed i don't think so she was skinny very skinny backbone tailbone the whole bit sticking out nursing a foal and uh so anyway um i started uh trying to get her feet back in shape mm -hmm. and the this this is a white foot so the hoof seems soft always mm -hmm. softer naturally right Mm -hmm. but she can't get any heels I, I've tried to put uh, I've cast her twice but the cast only stays on like three four weeks because around the barn there's a little bit of cement there's a cement shelf like platform and they tend to stand there a lot in the sun when it when it's sunny out they get some shade there but okay. she doesn't uh she doesn't tend to grow very much heel and whatever she does grow she tends to wear it right off okay. see that foot right there after I cast her 
you see how there's a separation in the front of the hoof wall, the toe? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what happened when I put the cast on. After it came off, I noticed that. I said, whoa, wonder what yeah, happened. Well, yeah, really. I've never seen well, that happen before, but I think it's starting to grow out a little bit. So, But yeah, she's hard to, <laughs> hard to measure. So that's that little scoop that you see there too when I try to make it level with yeah. the toe. Well, it's mechanically the same thing going on. Yeah. You know, that, that I've been describing here. Let's see, let me open this up. And so I try to take this back as far in the quarters as to where she's just got some pressure on, on the heel mm -hmm. to try to, like you said, get some growth. But it, it just doesn't tend to be happening. It's been over a year. Does it, do you have a picture of when you first got her? Oh, uh, let me see. I do. Oh, well, let me find that. Okay. If you had a picture of this foot from when you first got her, and then we'll okay. make a comparison. Yep. So the first one i don't know if i can just drag and drop i don't know if i can let me see yeah i don't know okay. i'll have to go back to facebook so um if if you want to take a minute and and look at somebody else's foot i'll get this pictures for you okay well i'll look at your, your other the other pictures right. for it first all right and stay on this subject sure um let's see can't do that Yeah, her bulbs are really sticking out. And oh. but she's got nice cartilages. They are yeah, she, she does tend to, but uh just can't get any hoof wall underneath there. Like any I don't know how we're ever gonna get her heels to grow in. Now what what is this picture? Is one is there two do I got this two is, feet here? This is the just the one foot. One's the, the one with the two red lines there where I was trying to get the uh, tubules there. With, this is the uh, medial side. Okay. The one that you're looking at right now is the medial this, side. Of the back one. left. Oh, that one? Medial side with the red? Yeah. Okay. Medial. She seems to be more upright. On yeah, this her, side. her medial seems to be better. Yeah. Than the lateral one, yeah. More upright. Yeah. Um, let me save the image. Save that. Open it. Oh, I think I wasn't showing the right thing here. Just a minute. Oh, okay. I see what I was doing. Okay, I'm showing the. Let's see. Is this the same foot? Yep, yeah, that's the uh, that's the lateral side. Yeah. Okay, so this is the lateral side. Yeah. And let's see. And this is the medial side. Huh. Hey, I've sent you some from when we got her before I even trimmed her. Okay. Now, I, I think I only had the medial, the, the lateral side, the heel, like from underneath the sole and the front view. If I could find another okay. one. The quality of her hoof was horrible, too. Okay. Okay, I'm going to try and... Hmm. Let 
Ah. Trying to get a picture of both of these. Just a second. I'm not great at using the nippers, so uh, that's why you see a bit of a cut right there, like a pointed edge where she's in the in the uh, Me quarters. Too. Me too. You know. And she moves. She's not very cooperative, but that's okay. You have to be a professional farrier to be good. I know they make it look easy. It's not easy. <laughs> they do make it look easy, don't they? They do. Nicely a smooth line cut right across. Like, oh wow, I yeah. try that. Nope. I'm not going to make any smart remarks about how they do good working as chefs at like <laughs> McDonald's. Oh. Cutting up, cutting up onions. Oh. And tomatoes. <laughs> um, but they are very good at tool using. And so that's, they like to criticize us, you know. Yeah. You know, can you see the way she uses that knife? Sharpen your tool. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see here. Okay, new share. And then then I'm gonna go find that uh picture you just posted. So hold on here a second. Oh my goodness. Well, she's improved a lot. She she had to come a long way. Just a minute. Yeah, you got you got a lot of improvement in reality. You know, I mean, she had this was a terrible foot, and what she's got now is a, a great improvement over that. You know, there's so much growth and healing that has to take place on some of these horses before they can even do anything. Oh, yeah, her feet were not nice at all. Yeah, so I'm going to show. Okay, so you're seeing the pictures of of the foot there, right? Yeah, this was like August 20th this okay. year. Okay, so now let's look at this other picture. See? I mean, just look, you know, and look back here, too, in the cartilages and everything. I mean, her frog was so pulled under her foot, you know. Boy, this is definitely low heel, long toe syndrome. Oh, yeah. We've got going here. You know, so to go from that, this minute here, get that bigger. To go from that to, if I can find it. To this, this is a, a drastic improvement already. And her heels will come. Um, one thing uh, you might have to do more is trim a little bit more frog off the back, off the whole frog. Because, okay. because it, it could definitely be holding us down. But, 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 but you don't want to get carried away on that either because... She doesn't look, she doesn't have a lot of heel right there. Let me annotate. See, this how that is right there. That's right. Okay. So, you you know, you're wanting this to grow here. Um, I would just, even if it looks run forward for a while, I would still just let it grow to the yeah. last here. You know, and uh, because you have to grow these out in order for these to be able to kick them back up. Even if if they seem longer and you're afraid of your heels, you know, running forward. Because, see, these horn tubules cannot kick those little ones up. Structurally, they can't do it. And so... You have to grow this in, even if it's, oh, God forbid, run under run, you know. See, that's a thing. People are afraid of under run heels. You know, I used to be, and you hear, if you're on any barefoot groups, they're always talking about it. That and abscesses. Yeah. And uh, 
you have to let this grow no matter what. I don't right. file them at all. I don't touch them. That area, that's it. I don't okay. touch it at all. It's just that it, she tends to just wear it off. Okay. Well, they well, don't maybe, grow. Maybe some hoof armor. Yeah, I was kind of looking at that. Is that good, though? Do, will that actually protect yeah. the heel? It is? Yeah, it'll keep it from wearing out. Okay. Put, put you know, three or four coats on it. And then repeat them. You know, I have a chair just like that. Yeah, that's pretty handy because I got bad knees. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a real nice gal named Penny sent it to me in the mail. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was a sweet thing to do. Yep. Penny Mecklenburg. Um, yeah, well, okay, so we got to get this this little bit growing here. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, I would try some hoof armor. And, you know put several you know I, what's in hoof armor i mean what is it oh it's like uh shellac <laughs> That's like, I don't know. and it literally will do that Keep well it it's like you know you know like hard as nails how you yeah. put that on your fingernails it helps your fingernails grow you kind know of. it's it's like that but thicker and and hardier like like okay. a form of uh epoxy plastic i've seen that uh it's it's hard to get certain products in canada that you have in the state but i've mm -hmm. seen one or two different sites and i've looked at the hoof armor you have to in, put that in with like a gun right yeah well i think they and, have a gun yeah and that's like i don't know how much it is in the states but here it's over a hundred dollars oh gosh forget that um ouch there's got to be something else you could do. Well, that's why I tried casting it. Yeah. And at least it protected the bottom of her foot for a little bit, you know, but yeah. as soon as you take, she gets the cast off, it's like, whoop, there goes the heel again. It's got to be something you can put on that. Let's look at the bottom of the, of the foot. Just a minute. Let us look at, let's look at the, at a soul view. Yeah. What a difference. I mean, you know, from uh, from what you had there. So, yeah, yeah, it's changed a lot. It's looking good. Even the angle of the dorsal wall is steeper. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you I've are making improvements. Tried, I slowly tried to take the toe back because I knew I, I shouldn't fold her foot in half, you know. So I had to kind of leave the toe for a while just to take a little bit and I really tried to get a lot of the flaring and stuff off and, and then feed her well so that she's healthier. She's got a healthier hoof. Are you on mute? Yes, I was. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was just saying I lots saw of a little movement, but I didn't hear anything. <laughs> yeah, lots of improvement. Lots of improvement. Okay. So um let me go over here. Eh. Oh well my there was another picture here um that I didn't see that you sent. You uh oh my goodness. Let's see. Uh da -da -da -da, new share. I mean, looky there. See, whenever you think you're not going anywhere, just just come and look at these older pictures. Yeah, that's exactly what she had. Uh, that's what we had to start with. Yeah, my goodness. You know, and it was almost like a mossy kind of growth all over her whole hoof. Yeah, you that's know? periopal. Oh, okay. That's when when the feet are compromised. The periopal does really weird things, and it covers the whole hoof capsule and it gets very scaly looking and dry and i don't know who trimmed her feet before but they had that big scoop in there too that was near the front oh right here yeah she she may have just broke that out too yeah see here's another thing look where the quarter this is the quarter look where it's at it's supposed to be back here right 
see and and just right here you know you can see where the frog stage just been sucked out from between the bulbs and the frog sucked forward And I mean, look at the weirdness of the bars and that you know, bar went like almost well halfway up to the apex of the frog. Like I couldn't yeah. even define where it ended in the sole. Like yeah. to dig it out, you know? Well, yeah. And that's like like, you know, I showed you on my horse how how this part just like look, you it, it covers up the sole. Yeah. You know, the real soul. So my goodness. Yeah, you have come a long way. Look, her toes are so long, she's dragging them in the dirt. Yeah. When, you know, when she break over, barely, then her toe would drag along the, along the dirt. See there? That, oh, see, they shouldn't oh, do yes. that. Oh, and really? Look at, That's what that is. Yeah, look at the quality of the hoop wall. Yeah, on a, on a, on a correct foot, you'll never see that. Okay. Not that much. It's just like she was dragging her toes because she couldn't get stuff up off the ground fast enough because breakover was so far forward you know see because low low heel long toe gives them a further reach that's how stupid can you be oh my whoever gosh. thought that up had I been know. stupid you know that's what i think racing mentality isn't it it's what the racehorse mentality oh yeah yep and whoever thought that up okay probably really knew the truth but they wanted to screw up their their competitor <laughs> so, oh yeah man grow those toes lower those heels you bet <laughs> well it hurt a lot be of going faster yeah you've done a great job you know well, thank I, you that's good to hear yeah but i was you a little know, discouraged well sure and stuff but, you know, we just got to keep coming back to the fact that this is a living being and that we're doing things no one has ever done before. We're like Star Trek. We're That's on right. a, we're, we're, we're on, we're uh, exploring new frontiers, you know? That's right. Frontiers so and hoof care. The, the protect the heel thing. I just had a thought. I don't know if it would apply. But there's a product called, um, I have it on my computer, DE Hoof Taps. Yeah, Hoof Taps. I wonder if putting them back there would work. I've used them before. It's, what is it called? DE, the letter D, the letter E, yeah. Hoof Taps. Pack and uh, taps, T A P S. Oh, taps. how like in the world? Here. Look that up, and it's and it's a um, metal. I don't even know how to describe it. You have to look at it, and you tap it in, and it's got zinc coating on it, so it's antimicrobial. And the metal in there, um, when they land on it, is supposed to help protect the wear on the heels or any other place you put it on the foot. Okay, they I will also get that. I'll see if they, they sell also it in use it in white line. They put it up in the dirt white line to help combat the disease that's up in there because of the, the zinc that's been put onto the metal. Okay. They're really easy to put on, but if you do it, for God's sake, get a pair of needle nose pliers or your thumb is really not going to be happy. So okay. have you used them? I've used them and I found out that they're small and to hold them in place while you're hammering is a real hoot because they're very skinny. You can cut them in half and not make them as long. They've got three prongs on them. If you don't want it that long, you can cut one of the end prongs off and just use the center one and the end one. Is but there a video somewhere showing how to apply those? Yeah, on their website. So okay. anyway, I found that if you hold them with your finger in place and then nail, yeah, that doesn't work because they're very tiny. So, okay. Yeah. I went and got um, a pair of needle nose pliers to hold them in place and then I hammer. <laughs> much better but i put them back on the heels originally back in the heels to see if it would protect and back then i didn't have the needle nose pliers so i kept hitting my thumb and i didn't get them in as deep as they should have gone flush so they kind of bent over i haven't done it since but i'm thinking about doing it again this week since i tried glue ons and he kicks them off with great abandon to protect his heels so i'm going to go back to the hoof taps 
Now, do but you I got, just let those grow out or like fall out on their own whoop, or what? Whoop, they can fall out. Mine fell out. One, when I was just cleaning him up, it was just hanging there and I grabbed the needle nose pliers and just pulled it out. Okay. But they're so small that there's no way in hell you can hand, hand, hold it with your fingers and nail without wailing yourself. And they don't really, you know, discuss that. So I literally went out and bought a cheap pair of needle nose pliers to hold them in place against the hoof. And then I use the hammer on the other side. And that way I'm not hitting myself. I can keep the tap where it's supposed to be vertical as you're tapping it in, literally tapping it in with the hammer. Okay. I have never seen that product on any like farrier sites or hoof sites or anything like that. I know, I, I, I found it while just hunting up how to protect hooves one day. Healed. Okay, I will Google that and see if we can have, uh, get that here somehow. You know, um, I can always mail them to you. They shouldn't cross the line without, you know, there's no chemicals in them, it's just metal for God's sake. Okay. But they come in different, you know, get the smallest quantity of them that you can. But they're very, they're very, you know, tiny little things. So if you don't have a pair of um, needle nose pliers to hold them in place, they keep falling over. And when you hit it, then you hit it and it lays flat onto the hoof because you just hit it and knocked it down flat instead of hitting it square on. Sounds like it fun. Was a real, it was a real shit show until I figured out that needle nose <laughs> pliers were really required. Okay. Hey, maybe well, uh, a hammer too, like an upholstery hammer. You know, I have a smaller, I bought a smaller little hammer. It was the cutest little thing with half the length of it from like one of those, oh, uh, what is it called? Um, Harbor Freight stores. It was up front and it was the cutest little short hammer. And I thought, oh, well, that's kind of cute. It'll fit in my box. It's not real heavy. And it, you know, the shaft on it's only half as long as a normal hammer and the head's a little smaller. So I use that instead of a big honking regular hammer. And then I will, you know, put the, the hoof up on the stand or between my legs. And I will hold the, the tap now in exactly where I want it using the needle nose pliers and then tap it in. Okay. So, but the idea is that the metal being in that area doesn't allow it to wear, wear as fast. It, it, it so, doesn't, I, you know, I'm having a hard time with this in that it's not right on the wall. No. Where did they put it in the white line? I tried to put it more towards the wall. Okay. There's a, uh, um, you know, I'm going to try and think of these things too that, that are used in building. And they're just little, little metal cap things that you can pound into wood. And I'm thinking we can find something like that to just pound into the heel wall. Huh. Just to yeah. cover the, the very back of the base of the yeah i never thought of that something like that but that yeah that's a good idea too anything that would sort of attach to the back of the heel wall and yeah. give it some protection yeah so these don't go into the the wall they go into the white line okay i don't yeah, know the, from the looks I've of been it here. Trying to, i've been trying to hammer them a little bit more towards the outside of the wall Do and they the work? area I didn't oh, I have, see. you know, I didn't have any problems with them. He didn't care that they were there. Um, so you if you the, want, if you wet, if you put one, wall, one per heel, like, or do you I put a put row one of in them? Each heel in the back. I just put one in each heel in the back. Okay. If you would soak the hooves and, and soften up the um, outer wall a little bit, I think you would be, because the points on them are really sharp. I think you would be able to, if the hoof has been softened up a little bit, be able to actually get it out there a little bit more to the outer, the outer wall. And on okay. some of these heels, they're so damn small to begin with, you can barely tell what's, you know, there's not much area to work with. Yeah, she doesn't have a lot of hoof wall back there either. You know, so I just figured if I put it in there, it wouldn't hurt. And if it took, if it took any of the brunt of the wear, I was happy. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds like a good idea to me. Yeah, thanks. I don't know. It was just, it was just you know something that didn't seem too too invasive, too dangerous to try. You know, and I I tapped it into another hoof, not my horse, but another horse that had pretty bad separation, and I just kind of put a couple in there 
just to kind of fill the void in a little bit and the antimicrobial properties that they put in it, just trying to stave off anything until I can get some of that cleared up. Okay, that's Matt, good. Yeah, thanks know, for that. I don't know. It's just worth a shot because, I mean, we got to, you know, there's got to be something we can put back there that, like she said, we can tap in or, you know, get on. I mean, there's not too many other ways to attach it to the damn foot. That's right. You know, we don't I, have to. I, I bought that. Uh, I bought the glue, like like where you make, you know, you can make the artificial um, uh, shoe out of a silicone yeah. kind of stuff. Not, it's not even silicone. It turns really, really hard within seconds. Well, I've tried to build her up a little false heel and then wrap it and cast it, but they never stay in. Those little heels come right out. Right. It's well, a nightmare, too. It takes me two I, hours to fight with her, and she, oh, it, it heats as it dries or hardens, and she just hates that. So she'll kick, and oh, it's crazy. Doesn't work. I just found Look, something really interesting. What's that looking thing? That looks medieval. It does. Oh, like a top dancer. Oof, and it's a, it's a Michael Pull special heel hoof clip. So I was wondering what it was. And from the looks of it, look at it's got the screw here. Where? It's to yeah. push heels apart. Oh, what? You don't about that, do you? Yeah. That doesn't like sound for like a good idea. For contracted heels, like for contracted heels, like look, like um, somehow. How like, do you put them on the foot? I don't know. Uh, I have to find that out. But that's a pretty interesting concept. They probably um, nailed them on. That's look, why uh, they put it, it on with screws. And look, see this little tool here. Is there a video? Look for a video. I will. But see this little tool. Okay, that goes in that little hole there, and you screw it. It's uh, got a screw. And look, it's got little. Uh, these are on little spacer things. Here, like braces for teeth. Only you're pushing them apart instead of pulling them together. Yeah. <laughs> so you, how cool so you is gotta, that? So you have a hoof that's contracted, trying to hold itself together. So you're going to force it apart. What in the world is going to happen to the foot? Well, no, no. Where well, does that? Even I can understand. I can understand how this would uh, this would uh, be kind of handy in a way. Yeah, but where is that on the bottom of the foot? The back? How? Yeah, I don't know for sure. Uh, I just does found it. Does go across the bottom and they walk on it, or does it go across the back, across the heel bulbs? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Let's uh, so we should That's see if we can. I'm still trying. We'll to have to research it. that and find out. Cause he makes some other stuff too. Eh. Where to go? Oh wait, I got. What is it called? I got my laptop here. It's uh Michael. P U H L. Hold on, Michael. New new window. Michael. P U H L heel hoof clip. It's only 115 bucks. Hold yeah, on. but that's in their money. In and, in American or Canadian, it's probably twice that. Oh yeah, who's their money? Oh, New Zealand. New Zealand. I'm not sure what their currency is like. Comparable. Hey, wrong? usually ship same working day. There you go. Now he has some other stuff too. Our, well, here's another one. Michael pulled toe hoof clip. Like what? 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 <laughs> Look at that thing. Who what is, is that this? supposed to do? Do they have any pictures of the thing on a foot? I'm I don't working. know. Hold on, I'm looking. She's looking. That's pretty amazing. Oh my God! Where is it? Rate a review. Recently viewed. Where the hell? There's a uh, uh, a hoof clip. So this could this could pull stuff together like a crack, or it could push stuff. This like if you had a crack, a separation, you could put this on there and then screw that thing there, and it would pull it together. So that's pretty inventive. He's invented a lot of stuff. Hoof clip related products. Yeah, it says for repairing cracks. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, I'm a good guesser. I just posted a link in the chat. I found a bunch of pictures. Okay. Uh, okay. I don't know how to get the chat. I just sent you a 
Did you send me a thing on it? I sent it, yeah, like the Zoom chat. Oh, okay. I, 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 can't, it, I don't know how to get in there and make anything work on that. Can you send on. it in? in yeah. Oh, look oh. here. Well, here's a picture. Okay, here. Wait, wait. Oh, uh, new share. There's a picture of a crack. That's for the toe. Well, that I that I can understand. You yeah, screw it, like right. I want to see what the heel clip does. Yeah. It kind of looks like the same damn thing. You know. Did you find one? No, I'm still hunting for a video in the world's worst way. Trust me. He doesn't really show a whole lot on his site, which is not helpful. Yeah. Ah, heel clip video. Let's see if I can find a video. Well, I'm willing to give that a try and see what happens. It can't hurt. Yeah. No, oh, you mean the the clips? Yeah, yeah, or the taps, the little, if I can find yeah, those. Yeah, the taps. Yeah. The taps, I, okay. I can name some. Literally, I bought too many if you really want to try them. Wait, 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 horse with low heels. Yeah, that way you wouldn't have to buy a whole bag of them. Yeah. No, they come in a little yeah. cute container. I'm, I'm not sure if they're uh, available. I'll have to check just to see whether they're even around here in Canada somewhere. We're always like 10 years behind the United States in technology and stuff. Our our clown in government is slow. <laughs> Did you say our clown in government? That's or right. He's our economy? clown. He's economy embarrassment in government? To the world. <laughs> He's our embarrassment to the world. Oh, man. I feel for you. Yeah, get in line. He's friends, he's friends with your clown. Yeah, yeah. Hey, <laughs> yeah. So they far, seem to have the our, same mindset. Our, our wannabe dictators. Yeah. So far, everything he's showing is using it for crack. He's got a screw on. Oh my God! He's got. If you go, he's got a PM horseshoe cap set. Literally, they look like glue ones with the wings going up, and they screw into the hoof with a hoof shoe on the bottom or shoe. Huh. Wow. With well, mounting screws. Pretty inventive guy, isn't he? Um, oh, my God. I'm trying to find a picture of one of these things across the heel. He's got a picture of everything. But the Can you give me the thing. site? I am on. It's called PM Huff. P M H U F T hoof P M hoof tech Nick. Oh my God. P M U right. P M H U F T E C H N I K dot S A A R L A N D. Where is this guy? Can you spell that? Well, just uh, let me see. Why don't you message the link via messenger? I'm working on it. Hold on. Let me. It looks me. like it's a German site. It does. It is in German, as far as I can tell. All right. Let me see if I can see if I can share this little puppy. How do you share shit on this thing? Oh, oh you sent it. me a clip. Just a minute. Uh... Oh yeah, that's for the the toe clip. That that looks like it would work. Hold on. How do I find you in this? Okay. All right. Well, okay. Well, let's look at more, more of that later. Um, we're going to move on. I'm listening, but I'm still looking. Okay. We're going to move on to somebody else here. Um, okay. Who was next? The flat foot. Oh, no. We were going to look at that flat foot and what to do. What flat foot? The thoroughbred. Is there anything she should be doing in particular? I can't remember who that. I'm Marcia's was. foot. Marcia. Yeah. Marcia. We were talking about the heel wearing out, and then oh, we yeah. went. Marcia, Marcia, Marcia. I forgot about Marcia. Yeah, you know, we were doing the tension <laughs> of how to protect it, but we got to get back to what can she do besides protecting it. Like, what should she particularly be trying to do or not? Oh, well, do? just to keep going the way you're going. I can't do anything about it being flat. Okay. okay. That's that's all something that'll take care of itself. 
as you continue on the road you're on. You're doing good. You know, okay. the good. problem is... You know. Is, uh, talking about when you were mentioning the periopal and how much to take off around the frog and that what I've been doing with her is just right at the like if I were to make a line between the heels where the, on the frog like that's uh -huh. you can see where I take that that's the limit that I take I don't go back on, onto the bulbs I just take the periopal off the the back of the frog a little bit and leave it okay is that that sufficient yeah this looks good back here um you might see where the center line the it ends down the center of the frog mm -hmm. right We're there about that's about as far as i go when i take off the periopal i just take a little bit out of the central sulcus there to clean it up and that's it okay yeah what i would do i would just start cleaning my frog up a little more because you can see this is wanting to pull back this way okay all this wants pull back this way and that's okay um i would just start trimming my frog up more and putting more of a central sulcus in there Okay. Right in here. Um, and that will eventually help bring the, the heels in a little bit and stand things up? Or? It will. It will. Because then the back of the foot, it's wanting to pull up anyway. So okay. once you start removing some of that, it's going to loosen it to be able to pull up this way. Okay. Yeah, just start um, trimming your frog more, shaping it more. Um. I'd be interested because I bet that's pretty hard, still pretty hard frog. It Actually, could be I, her frogs improved a lot from when she first came. They? they were horrible at first, yeah. And almost I mean, like at the apex, it was nothing but a big hole. It, uh -huh. it, was, like, it was a mess. Okay. And but, I would yeah. I would clean up my soul. Okay. As well. Um, I was afraid to touch too much of her soul because happy, I thought she was thin, really thin. It may be thin, but it's okay to clean that up. You don't want to get a bunch of lumps and bumps because if her soul is not wearing, then her soul will not grow. Okay. So, uh, you know, you know, if I were you, I'd try and if you could get a, get a, a, a hoof rasp or a hoof, what do they call them? Oh, they're rounded. The curved one. If, yeah. if it's really hard though, get the black one because the white one it does not remove a lot of material unless you're like um superman okay get the black one which is a lot more aggressive because steel brush you wouldn't do it no oh, you've, gotta, no, you've no. literally got to be able to take this these you lumps and bumps out of here right okay so i have and the white one it out. I, I bought the white one because i was afraid the black one and i wouldn't know what i'm doing and i would get into trouble taking too much now the white one i can use it but dear god the amount of work it takes so i'm going to go back and order a black one now which is much more aggressive and that's just like a little hand rasp thing a little round thing yeah. eh? push okay. if you hold it one way you can push and it'll file and if you turn it around and you pull it'll file okay so it depends on where your strength is and what part of the hoof you're going after but you can angle it to get the bars you can angle it so that you're taking like out in the quarter area or you can go straight across in front of the frog. So the black one's much more aggressive. Um, if you have a lot to remove and it's really dry and hard. And then sometimes what I do is I remove a bunch with that and it gets down into the softer stuff and then I can use my knife or something a little bit more controllable. Once you remove that outer, outer, outer hard stuff, it does seem to get a little softer inside. But if you own both the black one and the white one, you get you start with the black one to get through the worst of it. And then you can use the white one, which removes a lot less per stroke and okay. do a lot of nice cleanup. I've used it a lot and wish I had bought both of them at the time, but I didn't know. I use okay. it all the time. Okay, I'll try that. Thank you. Yeah, they are good. Okay, so, uh, Marcia, I'm going to send my pictures into your messenger. Okay. So that I can show what his foot is looking like now. Uh, da -da, da -da. So those heel things from Philip are not meant to go across the back or the bottom of the heel. He's just saying about any heel cracks that you have in the back, the back what he's calling the heel, which is really more the heel quarter. If you have a crack back there, uh -huh. that's what that thing was for. Okay. 
kind of so, deceiving in the name. Yeah. Well, it was a nice idea. <laughs> but he has a lovely he has a lovely place in Germany that you can send your horse and he'll fix it. Oh, well, that's nice. As long as oh, he pays for shipping. Oh, it's beautiful. Just man. <laughs> pay for shipping. What? <laughs> well, I want to be a I want a prime membership. Right. Right. Exactly. Okay, so let me get these pictures sent here. Oh man. But go. yeah, those curved rasps were a genius. There's a, I forget somewhere there was someone actually making their own. They had a, a, a Smith bending, bending regular rasps into that shape. Oh, that was Lana. I don't know who it was, but I'm like, okay. Yeah, it was, it has, was Lana. It's got nice handles to hold on to though that, you know, you're not going to rip your hand apart. Who, who Lana's? No, my, the one you buy, the white or the black one. I forget oh, okay. what it's actually called. I've used that thing so much recently, it's not even funny. Is it called but a soul need... rasp? Yeah, and I really need a black one. Like, I really need a black one. And I just keep forgetting to order it, which I'll probably forget to do when we're done here again. Make a note. No, yeah, no. if you if you can't do with the grinder, then those are the next best thing because you really have to be able to stimulate the sole tubules so they will keep growing. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, my horse will tolerate me all day rubbing and you know patting on his feet with that thing. Get near him with a grinder or even just a, a Dremel, and he loses his mind. <laughs> I keep trying. I keep hoping, you know, sooner or later, he's going to let me. We break a lot of cross ties in the interim. Yeah, this, this thoroughbred here won't let me get uh, a Dremel or anything near her either. Yeah. You know, I don't know if they, I don't know what they did to him or, you know, what they think it is. I have no idea, but man, he just loses his mind when he hears it. Well, I assumed a, a racehorse had had their feet done enough and fooled with enough that she would be, you know, yeah. had probably experienced all of this stuff, but I guess not. Yeah, oh, you would yeah. think so. No, you got to see what some of these racetrack um, farriers are like. I've spent years on, you know, with them and it's, it's pretty archaic. They're used to the sound of the furnace. They're used to the hot heat on their bottoms of their feet with the hot shoeing, if they had that. They're used to being yanked and pulled around, but they don't normally spend the time with power equipment that just takes too takes too long and it's just you know it's just not what they do mm -hmm. yeah it's, they, they don't really because they're not really shaving on them and all that all the time you no know, they're not spending a whole lot of time for hoof trust me yeah so they're just you know they're just getting in there with a knife they're getting in there with the file and then they're slapping a new shoe on yeah, there's wham the the wham bam slanky yeah, right. thank you ma'am trim is what I call those. <laughs> now maybe now maybe now maybe you're more echelon racehorses who are in a you know in a better level of care and better level of everything. Maybe they're used to it, but not your everyday back backyard track horses. Yeah, it's not the kind of care they get. Yeah. Okay, so I got those pictures loaded. So I did want to show you, I did find my foot, the one that I uh, have in the new series of the dissection. I finally found it. I had lost it in the freezer. Oh, God. And uh, uh, so I had taken it apart. So I kind of wanted to show you those pictures. So uh, I'm going to show you these pictures and then the, a couple of pictures of my horse's foot. Then we're going to move on to uh, who else? Brandy? And there was somebody else. Was it you, Marion? Anne, I think. No. Anne? Was it an okay. Anne? I think you mentioned Anne. Okay. Anne, are you still here? I had asked something about when do we trim off the periopal. Okay. Well, well. <laughs> but that, that could take a long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's approach that subject next week. Can we do that? Sounds good. Okay, thank you. All right, so anyway, here's that foot. I just thought I'd let you see it. 
You know, we're getting ready to have it for dinner. <laughs> oh, not good joke. Okay. Ah. I, won't here, I won't be here next week because the farrier is coming at the barn and I need to pick her brain some more. Oh, okay, good. Okay, so here you see um, the side of the foot where I didn't remove the skin, like here. Now, even though you see the coronary band going down like this, that's just because the hoof capsule's been off for quite a while and the whole back of the foot has collapsed. There's the other side. Here's where your bulb is, or well, not yeah, not quite your bulb. I'll have to look again. Trying to remember what's where. Coffin bone ends right here. Right there. So, yeah, so see all of this corium, the heel and everything is removed from, from this cartilage. There, Look at your collateral cartilage. See, it's not just above the hairline here. Okay. And uh, this here, look at the shape of it. Okay, so here's Valor. Now, one thing about Valor, has got very good. Uh, I'm going to be interested to see. Here's the thing. I hadn't trimmed him for quite a while, so everything kind of collapsed forward. Um, but look at the color of his hoof capsule. They used to be black. Okay. The more correct the foot gets, the more it expands and is able to breathe again. I noticed that, too, with my quarter horse. His hoof yeah. in the back was totally, he, he had four black feet and now yep. he doesn't. Now they're what, they're lighter. Yeah, that's because it, the foot was so compressed that it was damaging the pigmentation. Just like um, his foot used, the sole used to be solid gray. It's now white mostly. It destroys the pigmentation in the foot. Now... We go back here. So um, I was out there uh, yesterday after I trimmed and kind of looking at it, it looked like this whole thing had moved back. Because again, it had been a while since I trimmed. Um, I, I wish my stupid camera would. Uh, <clears throat> so this is all before trim, just a minute. I wanted to get in here and flip it around so you can see the back of his foot, what it looks like, other than the heels uh, being bent forward. He's really, really, really looking good back there. Um, okay. So very healthy looking, you know. Everything's hoof wall quality, very good, all that. Here. That's what the thing you see improve is the hoof wall quality. You don't have that uh, uh, scaly periopal. That when your hoof is unhealthy, you're going to have a lot of scaly periopal and fine hairline cracks. Okay, so it's been a good five weeks since I trimmed him last. Gosh, I wish this stupid thing had quit. So this was all before. This is the rear. And this, all these bulbs, eventually I want this bulb skin up here. And this frog stay up here. That's where it belongs. It doesn't belong down here. It literally belongs up here. Okay, but it is starting to rise and he is getting um, some better support. Okay, so I measured my hoof well and it was at three, uh, about three and a half inches, maybe a little, little less because that looks kind of funky there. I don't know. But Rear foot again. Yeah, 
about three and a half inches on that one. And everything's kosher on the sidewall because it's about a fourth of an inch shorter. So here is initial trim. I had not beveled yet. And just look at the nice tight white line and in the quarters. See there, didn't used to have that. This foot is, except for the very ends of the heels, the foot is rasped level and no bevel yet. And I've also rasped into some of the sole. Um, but uh, look at the nice thickness of the hoof wall, pretty uniform, a little bit thinner right there. But as all that corrects, it'll that'll all get more uniform as well. Linda, you said you don't clean out the seed of the corn anymore? Not really, no. Was that I don't, we, we were doing that, weren't we? I never, ever had people really do that. That was, that was something other people did. You know, I just never really have totally trimmed that out because I was always growing heel and I was allowing the wall to get a little longer. And so I wanted a little support there. So I left it. Okay. I don't know how much of a difference it makes, but I never went way, way back in there. But sometimes, you know, in trimming the bar, I kind of trim that area out. Uh, I don't know. <coughs> you can, you can't, I don't know. But I'm not trimming the seed of the corn out here like you do when you actually got false teals and there's a ton of false soul of flaky soul in there so right now he's got solid soul in the heels and uh so anyway so see i'm taking that out because i still want this whole frog and everything else to move back but see these bulbs used to be totally wrapped in here and then this periopal that grows from here would just go right over the top of them and and just make it in this nice, neat little package that you didn't even know that these bulbs here were actually curled way inward. And, um, and I'm doing better at taking this part of the wall. I was having a problem taking this part of the wall. I was leaving it high. You got to watch this little piece over here will wind up getting high, then it sticks out, then it in and of itself will keep your heels forward. And of course the rest, of, you know, one part affects another part in this whole movement thing. So I'm gonna be interested to see when I finish this trim, if this foot stood back up. Because if, you, if the hoof goes for a while and is long, um, then just the leverage is gonna pull everything forward. Um, I'm really liking what I'm seeing here, the support and the fullness and and things like that. Uh, I like the quality of the hoof wall I'm seeing. And look up here, see, might be a little jammed over here, maybe not, I don't know. But see how the wall goes down like that? Like if you take a, a capsule off an inner foot and you set it in front of you, you're going to see that the coronary bend has this shape like that. That's how, um, anyway, I came to the conclusion that that should be the way it should look when the hoof capsule's on it too. And so if it goes up, if, if the longest part of the wall is the center of the dorsal wall, gradually get shorter as it moves towards the heel. So I measured it at whatever it was there. And now it's a blurry picture, but it was like three and a half inches. Ah, let me go up here. Three and a half inches. They're about, not quite. Oh, I think that's what it was after I trimmed it down, but I'm not sure. Okay, so here it is. It's beveled and everything. Altogether, I took off about a fourth of an inch in length, maybe a little Linda, more. Yeah. You're, you're, when I see you with your sewing gauge there, 
that you're putting it right to the floor, right? You're not just measuring the toe, the hoof wall itself. You're measuring from the floor to yeah. just above the hairline, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, to just where the the capsule, you can feel the capsule ends right there. Yeah. But you start, you don't, you start right at the floor. Yeah. Okay. And so now it's trimmed. And it looks like he doesn't have anything to stand on, but that's not the way it looks from the ground. And I have started doing something else too. I've started now that his heels are grown in and I don't really have to weight this as much. Um, I'm, I just started beveling clear over to here to see if I could get those horn tubules to back up some more even. But see, I have a nice clean white line all the way around. Uh, full sole and the heels. Um, now remember, this is those heels where finally when the wall, uh, like if you look at the older pictures, this wall was really curled in and it's not anymore. Now this side is still a little funky, but this is the area that was covered up for years. This wall came over here like that, and then I had a bar like that, and it presented this part of the foot as the heel platform, the sole platform, when in reality it was covered up and clear back, back under here. So when that, the, the back of the heel and the seat of corn, when that's covered up with um, flaking sole, do we take the flaky stuff out or do we leave it? I don't know. I don't know. Oh. I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know. Um, I mean, isn't, you know, flaky means dead. Yeah. This, right. You know, yeah. I mean, my soul's not flaky or come out really easy. So if it's flaky and crumbly, I would think it just should come out because it's just blocking the way from the new stuff. Or, yeah, I don't know. You know? It might be flaky bar that has been laid over. I don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, usually it is sole, okay? But the reason it's so flaky is because your heels are bent up way underneath there, and um, that sole is dying off way under underneath there. And if you totally dig it out every time, then, you know, well, see, the thing I worry about is I want to remove enough to to allow things to move but I also want to leave some stuff in here to kind of support the heel that I'm allowing to grow higher than the wall, you know? So I, I don't want to totally take out, I mean, you're going to take out some of it, but I, me personally at this point in time, I don't want to dig way down there. And then yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And then have a big empty space that something else can go in. Yeah. I've done that and the heels have rolled over. So, yeah, okay. Yeah, so, I found that too. Mine did too. The heels will roll over. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Um, I was afraid of that. And so, you know, so if something is left there offering a little bit of resistance, well, that'd be a good thing. You know, now this up here, I want to get this cleaned up and stuff because I do want to stimulate the soul to grow. So that's the after trim then. And um, if I go out there now, all this wall will probably be dropped down and um, this heel will be stood up more. Because I removed a bunch of stuff that was causing leverage pulling it forward. And this is the interesting thing. When I measured the wall, it was still at about three and a fourth inches not, and I had full sole in the toe. And so that is telling me that um, this, especially the dorsal wall is it's a, that the foot is getting closer and closer to done all the time because I, what I expect is to have a three and a quarter to three and a half dorsal wall with a one inch of sole in the sole ridge and then the bowl of the sole fully filled up with sole and the sole his sole is hard and firm there's no softness at all at all to it 
So, and just the quality of the hoof wall. Um, but again, I want all of this to come up higher and this to get longer and these heels to stand up more. That's where I'm going. And then really establish the frog stay way up high between the bulbs and the back of the foot. Okay, so let's go to. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's go to to. Brandy, are you here? Yes, ma'am. Okay, well, since you're here, we're going to do you. Anna's here. She's listening on her phone. We'll do her after you. Okay. Okay, so, um, uh, Brandy, why yes. why don't why don't you tell us a little bit about your horse and what's going on and a little bit a little bit of history? Just a minute, and I'll I'll screen share. Uh, ten year old warm blood gelding who has a mental condition <laughs> that mental he perpetually, condition. yeah, he perpetually walks ten meter circles to the left. Doesn't matter if he's in a 40 acre field, doesn't matter if he's with friends or not. It's just that he doesn't walk the fence line. He just walks circles to the left. Hmm. So it is very difficult. He does grow because he's always moving, does grow hoof quite quickly. But with everything being as hard as rocks right now uh, and he's on crusher, I can't get any growth. And okay. I'm obviously doing something terrible he did have uh, chronic thrush in all four feet mm -hmm. so trying to get the frogs to become healthy has been a major issue mm -hmm. and he had been in uh, open heeled shoes for years um, if he was not done in whatever certain way the horse like that he wanted to be done he would end up with silver dollar sized wounds on his pasterns from oh, one wow. farrier and then another farrier, that interference went lower and he almost wore through the walls of the inside of both hind feet. So he'd have to be in hind bell boots and wow. stuff. And then he ended up with severely contracted heels, which then I think is why I've got a giant thrush problem. But mm -hmm. I've been plugging away. It, it, is he better? Yes. Is he 100% sound? No. Is he sounder? Yes. But he is not sound. And I have zero heel and I cannot get heel on the hind feet. So I'm thinking of going to glue-ons or something, but because he perpetually goes to the left, I don't think they're going to stay on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, poor guy. Well, these poor horses in general, you know, now, how long have you been with our his, group? What was his previous life? Why to the left? What's up with that? He was an embryo transfer baby. I met him when he was two. I was, I'm a horse trainer. So I was brought on to do a few horses of theirs. They are the most wonderful people ever, consummate horsemen for years. Um, but he was an embryo transfer and his surrogate mother was a thoroughbred who I never knew her, but I believe she was neurotic. And so he learned this behavior it is more having to do with food he has never been starved he is fat as a friggin' house but it's just something i don't know the wires in his brain are not connected the way they should be wow and then he was mpa uh because i was complaining to my farrier and trying to find different things and obviously i got told that i'm dumb and i needed mm -hmm. to stay in my lane which I didn't take very kindly to, so I ended up getting rads on him, and he was MPA in all four feet, uh, except for his one upright front, his clubby foot, um, but severely contracted heels, like, and so I can't get a frog stay. I, I, I can't. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> help me. Help me. Yeah, well, we're going to try and help you as much as possible here. And that's interesting. Like my mom has lived in Phoenix, Arizona for the last uh, 40 years. And she uh, uh, has had racehorses and works at the track. And she's tried to rescue. She has rescued many, many, many horses off the track by finding them new jobs. And one of the new jobs she found for them was embryo transplant mirror. So she has sent a lot of mares to embryo transplant just to help them avoid going to the killer. 
Yep. Which, in the end, that's probably where they go anyway. You know, it's not like them people got any honor either. So, but that's nope. interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, because his his brother is, it was not like that at all, and it was mm-hmm. just him, and he's been like that ever since he was a baby. Huh. So, yeah, that's, weird. That is interesting. Well, the poor guy. Well, let's take a look at his feet. Um, see, now, how long have you been in our group, and how did you find out about us? Uh, knowing that things were wrong, I took more interest to feet due to, because uh, I'm a trainer, um, biomechanical issues. Uh-huh. And, you know, which one comes first, or is it chicken and the egg? Um, the way horses move due to their feet, or the way the distortions happen because of the way the horses move. So then obviously I geeked out for hours and hours and I found you guys and then I'm like, Hmm, I will sit here and listen. Great. And then I, then I finally got tools and have been slowly trying to not get scared and not screw up my horse more than he already is. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I know. I understand. Yeah. We're, we're like all there. See, it's too bad that, uh, uh, the hoof care industry is such a wreck historically i mean i don't know if you've listened to much of what i've taught them on the history of hoof care yeah yeah you know oh yeah um but i was i was never like i'm not from the barefoot land i'm not like i'm i don't i don't play play in that game but i am disappointed with uh the lack of uh helping each other because it takes a team of you know riders vets barriers owners the whole thing yeah and when People tend to die on the rock that they know and don't think outside the box. Yeah, the only exactly. thing that really suffers is our pocketbooks and the horses. Well, exactly. So. Well, and see, uh, you've probably just heard me talk mostly about barefoot, but see, I talk a lot about general, uh, uh, general, the general history of hoof care, the farriers and the vets. Yep. Okay. Um, that is where it all starts. Because all these doctrines that are in barefoot, they've already been in farriery for the last 270 years. But then you got these people come along and think like they invented a new wheel when a lot of it's just plagiarism, you know, of yep. bygone days, like uh, frog contact, you know, forcing frog contact, ever lowering the heels for frog contact. Um, uh, farriers constantly bring the heels back to the widest part of the frog which always brings them down and depending on you know the look of the drawn how that what kind of thickness or whatever that horse's frog has um that depends on how much of their heels they're really going to trim out and how much damage they're really going to do so yeah you see it's just a real the whole thing is horrendous pain in the butt for all of us and like and I, said, sorry, I think I got caught in the whole long toe, low heel issue. And I was like, hey, I need heels. I need heels. And then, yes, I got into the debate with the farriers about, well, they need to come back to the widest part of the frog, yada, yada, yada. So then when I, in my ignorance, took over, I think I unfortunately bound my horse's foot in a way by taking, by taking the toe back, leaving the heel, touching nothing in the heels, but just not understanding uh, how that the bars also constrict the back of the hoof and the caudal part. And Uh so I think I screwed up there in my lack of knowledge. Well, I did too. You know, I'm here Mm -hmm. because, because I did these trims and, and screwed up my horse's feet because they screw up your horse's feet. Okay. I did them all right. That's all documented on YouTube. Um, uh, I did them correctly and it still deformed my horse's feet because that's what these trims do. And so you couldn't know, you couldn't know that because the the experts don't know it. You know, the only reason I know it is because in desperation to fix what I'd screw up, you know, I had to study, study, study and think, think, think and become super obsessed. Yeah. You know, and take a uh, uh, hundred thousand pictures and stare at them for hours. You know, good thing I don't have uh, my own kids anyway. <laughs> so, nope. been on this, like a, 
I'm curious if my periopal, if my whole frog is covered in periopal and that's why it's like huge. Like it takes up like the whole yeah. part of the, like it's huge. And well, then if you look on this foot on, it would be the medial side because there's his other hind leg and I see the tail is that part of his heel bulb was indented. And I'm like, oh God, what did I do? <laughs> yeah, it, well, I'm, I know, I, I understand what you're saying. Let's see, let me get it in a bigger deal and we'll turn it around a few times. Um, <clears throat> here we go. Okay, his heel bulb was indented. Are you talking about this one? Nope, the other one. This one? Right, yeah, there you can see there's the outside. And then if you move a little bit more to the inside, it's like right there, there's a line that's indented. Oh, right here? Nope, nope, go there, that. That? That is as actually an indent in the bulb of the heel. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, uh, it's it's just that that anatomy, like what I've been showing you, has been pulled around under here because with the with the trimming out of the heels, um, then then uh, the sidewall merges with the deformed bar and becomes a false heel. Like, look at here. Look at that heel. How it hooks. Look, there's yep. a little hook there. See that? Yep. Yeah, that shouldn't be like that. And so this side is trimmed out more, maybe, maybe not, I don't know yet, than this side, perhaps. Um, not sure. Let's turn it around a few times. Let's look. Oh, well, like this, this little funny hook here, that's just, that's just from old heel being there that is really nothing there that's from right. when when the heel was back here and it had a certain shape and then as it got pushed forward then it developed this little hook here and and this part here this is definitely um oh i can't tell if i'm trying to look here at ex what is going on with this foot um this heel buttress here is pulled into the side of the frog. Yeah. Right this is actually a contracted heel here. Yep. Whereas this one is not contracted in the same way, which is interesting. Usually you'll see uh, uh, both contracted heels. In this case, this heel is not contracted and this heel is. So that's that's interesting in and of itself. Huh. And I recognize this because uh that that happened to my pony when I was trying to correct her feet and get them unbound, and then um uh things got hectic and I did not this is before I realized that if you don't give them support, it's gonna contract their heels. And uh so I, I was in a hurry. I couldn't redo her foot with the support, and I didn't. And man, in a couple of days, her heels just went whoop like that, right over to the frog, you know? Yeah. Um, so, so that's what's going on there. Okay, so let's go back. You know, we do the best we can with what we know. What, what, what can you do when the experts have been in, up out in Bozo land for 270 years. You know, as everything else got more technological and advanced, they reversed. Randy, is that a back foot? Yep. Okay. I'll get better pictures this week and then I'll put them to our group. Um, but the, and I'll give you some other history photos. The, like the changes in the horse's feet have been exceptional, especially up front. Mm -hmm. But again, he's, he's still not quite right. Like he's still sore. And the, yeah. the, my hind feet, I think are my biggest issues. And especially the right hind to me, he looks off on his, uh, on his right hind, but I don't know. This, he's like lame everywhere. It sucks. Let's see. This. Okay. This is the other foot or is this the same foot? Wait. That, oh, that's yeah. the same foot, isn't it? No, that's not. No, that that's might be foot. an. Oh yeah, that's or is a it different. An one. That's a, 
that's an old picture of one of his front. No, that's not the same. That's, that's the rear. one we just did. Is that a rear? This is a yeah. rear. Well, oh, is that's this a front? front? That's a front. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Go the other way. Okay, so so it's it's all the same that all this anatomy gets pulled in. You develop a false heel. The foot bends in the center, and so you cannot get a clean white line here because nothing's growing down connected to where it should be. And, and the inner foot has been pushed into positions it was not meant to be in. Well, you're going the wrong way, I think. Am I? Yep. Because it was just two hind feet from the previous, there's the other one. That's okay, the right so hind foot. that's but... the other hind foot. Yeah. This one's a little more symmetrically distorted. <laughs> That's good. Well, I like I I produce fairly symmetrical distortions. Well, at least my my non-symmetrical distortions are the same on all feet, pretty much. Like I'm good at making match distorted feet. Because <laughs> I am so consistent at bad trimming <laughs> as well. So, um. <laughs> Like, should so, I put, like, I think I should put composites, like, glue-ons on them, so then I can see if I can't get more foot to play with. Because I can't get him off of his heels at all. Yeah, I don't know yet. I'm just, I just need Sorry. to look. That's okay. Now, look at it. From this picture, Brandy, it looks like the, that he's walking right on the, like, there's a lot of frog pressure. Yes. Is that because his frog, would it help Linda if he, she reduced the size of the frog a little bit? Would it help loosen things up in the back? Like she said too, it might just be a periopal frog. Okay. See there, it looks like there's a, right from the bulbs right to the apex, it looks like it, it's actually walking right on its frog because it's very flat. Yeah. Yes. And it's polished like rock. And I'm in BC, so I feel you on the whole uh government and everything else train out here um and you know out in bc like i'm in vancouver so it's like it is super rainy and super wet or we're on fire right now and everything's hard as a rock so his yeah. frog is polished and is the hardest thing i have ever yeah but then i'm afraid it's like because he doesn't have a whole lot of foot right now that i'm like i think i gotta put shoes on yeah, see, frog or not, right? See, there's no, no easy answer, no matter what. You know, that's the whole yeah. thing we deal with, and in, in this, and in corrective trimming. You know, there, it's never till the foot is there. It's ne and then you got to keep it there. Okay, it's never, it's you're never going to have that ideal situation. You know, um. So, so you're juggling things yep. all the time, but the more you learn, the more tweaking you can do, you know, like, uh, it still wouldn't hurt him to take off a little of this hard, hard frog and clean up the apex. That's not going to cause any serious damage to him. Um, let me look here. Now is that that that's that foot, right? That's the yeah, left hind. Okay, well see, he doesn't have a lot of elevation here. And you don't here. want his feet to contract. Now that that frog is keeping his feet from contracting. Now, how is he kept? Is he in a uh, pasture? He's in an in and out right now. Very, very large in and out. And then he has a whole <laughs> uh, electrical system that he can't just go in a circle. So he has to serpentine his way through in order to satisfy his need to walk. Okay. But he will spin. He's like 17 too. He will spin like a rainer just because he's weird. And he is like, he's super fancy, like super nice horse, which uh -huh. is why I haven't. I don't, you know, I've been told to put him down and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, ah, nah. if I can just fix this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, 
you know, I feel sorry for him. Why, you know, like, um, why would they say put him down? Because he's a bit of a management nightmare and he's not sound. And so it's, you know, the whole thing is why would you keep pouring money into a horse that isn't? And I'm like, because yeah. he's not, he's 10. Oh, he's 10. Well, still young. Well, he's a youngster. Uh -huh. See, what a shame. See, now this oh. just goes to prove what Bracey Clark said about how the horses in his day uh, didn't even live up to half their normal lifespan. You know, so of course people had to start eating horses. You had to do something with them. You know, like in Belgium and different places like that. You know, um, um, what do you do with all these crippled horses? You just have them to kill. Because yeah. you're crippling them because of, of Philip Lafosse. And then that scumbag that ran the Royal Veterinary College, William Coleman, for 38 years. You know, these people, man. And Randy, you think he's lame just because just because of his feet? Or is there any other, other things going on? He has been, this is years ago, uh, x-rayed from stem to stern, and he's clean in all other things. Now, is his pelvis wonky? Yes. Uh, is it from him perpetually circling to the left? Very well could be. And so he's just muscled more in one way to ride him um, when he was sound. Uh, felt like a dreamboat. Abs absolute bloody dreamboat. And you can make him straight and whatever. And uh, like, he will go correctly. But now with you know, granted it's 10 years of circling to the left, how, what else is going on? I don't know. And I do believe that I had a slight suspense or you never had it looked at. So I just turfed him out into a giant field, which is why I know, you know, on 20 acres with friends, he'll still circle to the left. Um, and I was like, okay, heal yourself. Cause I can't stall you if you do have a suspensory injury anyway. So figure out life and we'll see what, what it is in a year and a half. And that's now healed, but that I believe was farrier induced. And that's when I got into a giant argument with who was doing my horse's feet before. Cause and, he and was, he seems, he seems lame on all four feet. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And no, um, I'll tell, I'll get video. I'll, I'll send you guys all this, the stuff, but yes. Do I think he's comfortable? No. Is he no. much better than he was? Yes. But I'm to me right now, before it was up front, and but now to me it's more behind. And when I feel him, because I do actually have, uh, I'm talented in the field department, is it, he can't push from behind. And so it manifests a bit up front, but it is more about him behind. And he, he just scuttles. Well, his, 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 his feet are wrapped together and behind and small so he's in a smaller hoof capsule in all four feet than he should be yes you know he's definitely bound hoof bound in all four feet um uh and so why wouldn't he be not sound you know see that's the whole thing the 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 uh the surprise is not that they aren't sound the surprise is when they present their feet could be like this and they can present themselves even as partially sound. It's nuts. Yeah, I'm going to send you a uh, before what he used to be um, and just how much he's come up front and widened out. Uh, where are you here? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you something here. See, um, let's see. Let me get on YouTube here. Oh. Okay, where's my original? I want the happy hook. Okay. Yeah. 
I'll show you something. Just to, again, it's about understanding what's kind of going on, you know. Darn. Well, now that we're live, uh, I can't find my my uh, main video that I had on there. The second, where are you? Oh, here it is. Second. Okay, so I'm going to stop this for just a second. Okay, so, and, okay. Okay, um, just a second here. Okay. Well, maybe you can see it here. You'll get what I mean in here when I show you this. Trying to find a better picture or something here. Hold on. Okay, well, here, we'll just do it this way. Hold on. Um, let's see, new share. Okay, so this was my mare Molly that died in 2016. I have a lot of trimming videos on her. And this is a video I have on there about the internal foot of the horse that I did in, uh, when was it? Well, it says 2020, but I actually recorded it several years before that. It's just that uh, I went through a technological dumb problem where for some reason I couldn't upload video. Come to find out my computer was too old. All right, they had changed stuff on me. So it took me a couple of years to actually get it uploaded. So I really, 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 really trimmed her feet out of her. I want to show you something here. I've been talking about this today. I got to find another picture of her feet. Just a second. Because when, where I'm going at here is we want to understand more correctly what is going on with your horse's feet. Well, with all their feet, but especially with, with your horse's feet. Okay. And so let's see, um, okay, I'll look up this to LM for Molly, poor Molly, she never did have a real name. When we bought her, I didn't, they wouldn't give us the papers right away because she wouldn't paid for her and I couldn't remember her name. I just remember it ended with a E something. So I started calling her Molly. Well, her real name was Foxy Abby. <laughs> but she was called Molly her whole life. So, so okay, I've shown this before. Just a minute. Well, just a second. Hold on. Okay, so I really trimmed the feet out of this horse. I'll show you here. Let's see. New share. And I made this meme. I made this meme. Some of you have seen it before. What were you thinking? American Horror Story. Okay, see, I totally trimmed her heels out. I mean, 
uh, the frog out from between the bulb. There's this is in there, but you just can't see it. But there's no frog stay, not really. See. And then um, from 2000, uh, well, actually from 2015, I I did not dis discover we've been trimming at heel buttresses out till 2016. But all of 2015, I was growing heels on her. Um, because on both her and my gilding, I thought they had run forward heels or underrun heels. And what I was telling you a while ago is no matter what, you have to grow these heels so that these horn tubules can kick them up straight. All right. So they won't be underrun because when the heel is short like that, that that heel's going nowhere if it's under run like this okay um if these horn tubules are forward like so they're not going to move back and kick that little bitty sucker up so you have to grow it longer even if it's under run so that then these ones have something to kick up does that make sense it's structural engineering do, do you understand what i'm saying about how uh, these these horn tubules aren't going to move back. First of all, they can't move back because look at the angle they're on. Now on this, you're you're not really seeing it, but a little bitty tiny wall here. Okay, uh, these aren't going to be able. To, so you have to stand everything up or make it longer, so that these can then start pushing back and they can they have something to push back here. Yep. So uh see if i can explain it uh try and think of ways to explain it um so then i started growing her heels back see here and then oh this is this is what i was working on when i was describing every little layer of the hoof wall and i got back here to this part and i thought wait a minute what's that what's that we're we're trimming the heels out of our horses but anyway so i was growing her heels back and here's where i was trying to figure out well what's the shape of the foot really supposed to be like see so anyway um when she died I pretty much thought her feet were restored there, but there were a lot of things I didn't know yet. I wasn't even looking at the cartilages at that time. So then later, because I did take her feet and let me new share something else. Okay. Where are you? Okay. Can you see this picture on the video? Hello. Yep. Okay. I want you to look back here. Now, the, it's kind of hard to see on this one. But, you know, before when I was telling you, I was showing you this picture here. Just a minute. See this, this foot here? Okay. Mm -hmm. See this little piece right here? That yep. is what grows your heel buttress. And it is your heel buttress. Well, that ain't very good. Your heel buttress here that stabilizes the whole wall and supports the back of the foot right here so that all this maintains its shape. Well, when you trim these, you're just keep trimming them down, keep trimming them down, and then you're lowering the foot and this foot starts to wrap itself around this little piece here. gets completely pasted around so that you're you don't have any heel buttress anymore just a minute um okay this is gone okay now all you've got sidewall and funky bar this thing is uh buried and twisted into the foot there somewhere and you haven't got a real heel buttress anymore and nope. so not only can this little part Oh, thank you. Not only can this little part get twisted and wrapped, but then this part can get pulled around in there too. In fact, 
this can get all twisted in, clear up to where the coffin bone starts, about to there, so that your foot's only this big. <laughs> See? And so, because um, all this is cartilage and fat in here, it, it's movable. The only thing it isn't movable, except for being able to, uh, it can be forced backwards, is the coffin bone. So let's see. So, all right. So let's go back to to this. So hers, her foot never did get straightened out, and so uh, let me let me play some of this here. Okay, there you go. Now, who would know that, right? You would think that was heel buttress. It's not. Okay, it's not. This this heel buttress has been twisted around and compressed and crushed. It's not growing. Um, let's see here. Wait a minute. Oh, I'm doing it right. Wait a second. Let me do the annotate. Okay, so, you know, it should, that should have been out like that. And then the heel buttress wall would have been here and connected to wherever the heel would have been here. See, this is all wrapped around. And you see the cartilage pulled down in a circle. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Like so. And so it would have been more like this. See? So that whole part of her foot was missing, but I didn't know that till way later. But I did uh, learn at this time about the frog stay and how it works. And so in a lot of these videos, I'm showing how that frog stay works. So that was good. I learned that much. But, you know, we're talking about, okay, uh, you know how in barefoot trimming, they're always talking about heel first landing. But think about the fact that they're totally trimming the heels out of these horses, which forces them to land on their sensitive bulbs. And they're calling it heel first landing. You know, it's like uh, Satan himself could not have designed something more diabolically evil for the horse than what has happened. The torture, the maiming, everything in the last 250 years of health care. Um, it's just uh, the ridiculosity of man and the some of the stuff he pulls. You know, when when Philip LaFosse come up with the whole horses should walk on their frog doctrine, the people that tried it crippled all the horses they tried it on. And instead of going, okay, well, this guy's wrong. And, and what was interesting was the farriers in France, because up until that time, they believed in horses having heels and the frog up off the ground. The fairies in France came out against him and wrote long dissertations and, and, and pamphlets and everything against his ways. Oh, but because he could get a book printed, he got a bunch of followers. And so they're going to make their guy look like he's right, even when he's wrong. So then they come up with this idea, well, they just lowered the heels too quickly. All right. And so they started doing it slower. Well, okay, you take a horse in the wild, it's in a drought that travels 20 miles a day. Okay. And he gradually wears his heels out and deforms his foot, but he is created to adapt to harsh conditions that might do that. And so this periopal that is only supposed to crown the foot, okay, uh, as the back of the foot is being pulled down, that periopal, okay, it starts to be pulled down too. And it, it grows, this frog's being stripped out a long time, a lot of times, and it grows and it'll grow over the whole frog. Like so, it'll become a false frog. It's meant to help the horse survive 
and keep the capsule on. So, so when we're looking at your horse, okay, now his feet are worse than hers were, even though I trimmed out, trimmed him out, he's still got a lot of distortion. He's a big horse, but you know what? She got sounder and sounder. If she wouldn't have died, her feet would have even been better. Eventually, I would have, you know, discovered some of this stuff, you know, but he's only 10 years old. And I think he deserves a chance, but I can't guarantee you that, that I guarantee his feet could be fixed. I just don't guarantee that you have the skill to do it. Yep. I, I would agree with that. Or that I do. You understand? Um, I know the work intensive deal that I have to do on this pony's feet. Okay. To. First of all, trim them, get that old dead frog off, uh, elevate them and support them and keep them booted and and moist so that they will grow. And that's a Shetland pony. OK, uh, a big horse. Um, I do think he can be helped, but I think you're going to you would have to learn to use some power tools. See, and yep. if, at, at the least get a soul rasp. Because, okay, so you imagine uh, that the foot is supposed to not supposed to be all bound and bent up like that. And then the hoof capsule grows and it just holds it there. So you have to remove stuff to allow it to start moving a little and expanding, you know. And um, uh, some of that stuff is really hard to remove. That frog, sometimes if that foot is bent, that frog okay so like like let's say the foot is bent and the foot is bent like this well the frog is bent up in the foot like this too okay but that's the frog cram would be bent way up into the foot like that but the whole time that the foot was bending let me get a different color going here the whole time the foot was bending, the frog was just being treated as if it was normal, maybe trimmed a little bit, you know. And so even though the frog cram is bent up in the foot like this, the frog has been being trimmed to where it looks like this. See what I mean? Yep. It'd be like... um like like you have a pasture with grass in it you know and over here it's flat land like so but over here there's a ditch and under normal circumstances you'd see that ditch you know but the grass has not let's say the di the grass in the ditch has never been mowed and the grass has grown up to be the same height as the rest of grass i should put a little flower there then you're walking along and what happens you can fall into the ditch and not even know it right because it all looks flat well that's what happens to these frogs and in fact a lot of times you could have a piece of, let's say at one time the foot was flat like hers is here now. And then as the the heels got trimmed out and the foot bent up like so, um, the frog bends up into the foot. They can actually have a piece of dead frog that is years old stuck up in the foot right up in here. No way. Yeah. I'll show you. Just a minute, and I'll show you a picture of a foot that is nothing but that had the periopal grow over the whole frog with a piece of old dead frog stuck clear up here. Just a minute. Let me go find it. Let's see. Let's see. Um, I know it's here somewhere. Ah. Okay, where are you? 
Here, Lord, let me find a frog or this picture I want to show them. Oh, it would be under cartilage or frog or periopal or what would I have put it under? Uh, da -da -da -da. And a year or so ago, when I was first glomming on to this and was thinking, hey, I could probably re uh, release my pony super bound up foot. Um, so I started removing frog. I found it way up. I found frog under the sole, under the sole in the sides alongside the side of the frog. Dead, petrified, old frog. Oh man, I hope I can find this. So then how do, how do you know when to stop digging to say to be oh, crass? When it, when it bleeds, no, just joking. <laughs> <laughs> you will stop then though. Okay. Oh, I hit that, I hit that <laughs> the other day. A little bit of blood, just one little nick and trickle. Time to stop. Yep, time to stop. Well, in a in a normal frog, uh, it gets lighter colored almost white and in a really healthy frog you can see pink sole corium underneath it, the the innermost layer is almost opaque when it's when it's soaked like so you could see you know when i uh i'm gonna look here uh now i forgot what i was gonna say I'm trying to look at pictures and talk at the same time um, let's see F let's look under frog because oh oh I found it eh. okay oh and of course you know this is uh Van Horst did this um uh, but I'm gonna show it new share I got one somewhere like I don't know what they think they're copyrighting Anyway, so this Van Horst, he does a lot of these plastinization slices. And so here, here's what you have here. First of all, bulbs aren't supposed to be down. The hairline's clear down here. The This periopal or this uh, digital cushion here is supposed to be clear up here. Here's the old frog stay. Look what it's, it's covered over. This is periopal covering over the frog right here and this is a piece of old dead frog stuck up under in the foot that See? is insane yeah isn't that crazy wow. let's see what else i got here uh so all right let's see so that's why i say uh they can have some of this way up deep 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 in the foot okay so that's got to hurt. Oh. oh, yeah. Yeah. So his frog corium and everything, all his, the whole foot has been wrapped around in here. Um, and so, you know, bulbs aren't supposed to have cleavage. They're not boobs. Okay. <laughs> and, and so he's got this cleavage. A lot of times they'll have big crack hair. You know, they think it's thrush. Oh, it's not thrush, it's hoof distortion. It's the bulbs that have been squeezed together. The frog stay has been stripped out or pushed way up in the foot in a wrong position. And then the frog just gets dead or else it's just a periopal frog. You know, that periopal will grow clear in here. You know, have I showed the pictures of where eventually I found a flap over my whole central sulcus that was periopal and there was no true frog there at all so, wild you know like earlier i showed some of the stages my horse went through but then uh towards the end when i kept i kept trimming that and trimming that and remember though i'd been trimming i'd been growing my heels for a while so that is the only reason my heels didn't contract more if you have support, then that'll help. 
you know. But uh, it got to the place where uh, one, one day I go out to trimming and we'd been like in a 30 day wet period. And I went out there and um, well, I'll show you what I found. Okay, and uh, I'll show you what I... Looks like we lost Linda. I see that. Oopsie. I don't know if anybody else has sort of dealt with this kind of thing, but it's just sad and frustrating. And like the whole bottom of his foot is just flat. And his frog is the biggest thing I've ever seen in my life. I'm like, that's not normal. Dolly's got flat feet, but she doesn't have the, the big frog like you've got. Have you have you worked on trying to narrow the frog up a little bit? And just oh yeah, she she's come a long way. There's there's a bunch of the pictures on the the page. I'm, I'm talking about what is it, Brandy? Yeah, I just just because we did get a little bit of rain um, a few days ago, so I had slowly tried to take part of the the frog off, and I could get, but I'm so it just it stresses me out how sort of sensitive and lame he is and I blew my knee a year and a half ago so I have to because <laughs> uh, it's safe I have to sit on a chair and prop his foot up on my leg in order to do him okay so it's I can only do little bits at a time because I'm like a handicapped person now um but I but I have and then I did a little bit and then I let him set him free and he didn't seem any lamer than before if anything a little bit better so if I just keep going, but I wanted to talk to you guys to be like, hey, uh, uh, how much can I take off? Well, my guy was really low in the back and flat and kind of the same way racetrack, thoroughbred, no heel whatsoever, walking on the heel bulbs when I started. And I never touched the frog before I really met Linda. And figured out on my own that the heels were the, the crooks of the whole thing. So I stopped trimming them, but they weren't really growing. My bars were blown out to the sides, had a lot of extra sole. So when I first started working, um, I, when I first started really, really started understanding what was going on with these fat, you know, you have the tall and contracted and then you have these fat and low. Yep. So the fat and low ones, you know, she was like, okay, these big fat frogs aren't healthy when the feet aren't healthy. This is not a good time for big fat frogs. So what I did was every week or so, I just tried to take a knife and pare a little bit off the sides and just keep removing a little bit each week. Just take another swipe, take another swipe. And then on the top, just try to take thin slices off if I could, or use a rasp, you know, my sole rasp comes in real handy for this too and um you can actually sole rasp the frog when it's that tough it won't hurt it okay and just try to take the outer concrete layer off and on the sides just try to start thinning the frog up a little bit um so that it can start moving a little bit because right now it is holding everything in place and it's just become an immobile object in your way Yes. Okay. So what yep. I did was instead of doing a whole lot because I couldn't, and I really wasn't sure what the hell I was doing. I was just slowly taking from the apex to the back on each side, taking a swipe off. And then okay. each guy would just try to make the, the, the collateral groove over there a little bit wider and just take a little bit more and, and do it in phases. 
and just keep taking it. And then when I could, I would take a little bit, especially if the frog was as tall as the walls or even a little bit taller, I would just try to either take the knife or if I had to take the rasp and file that sucker down a little bit. You can actually take your rasp to it too. I mean, if you're not hitting blood, you're just hitting dead frog and just start th slowly start working your way through that frog layer and slowly right. start trying to make a dent in how big it is and how fat it is and just do it in stages. The bars, I forget what your bars look like. Um, bars, bars aren't, bars aren't bad. I had taken them back and like his friends, I'd sent Linda some more pictures to share, but we've lost Linda. Um, uh, like he had super jammed bars before. Cause I would take them right down. And then three days later, I'd look at his foot and it was like, they were back there again. But then now my thinking is, it was because he walks so much. Is it also that he just walks on his bars, which kind of then saves the outer hoof because like I don't have a whole lot of hoof behind in his hinds no, but I mean part so I, of it is because it's not growing part of it is what's keeping it from growing yes yes totally so, so like she was you know like she was saying you know we have all these obstacles in the way of the growth you know all these things are getting in the way of anything moving so I started with the obvious to me which was this big honk and frog mm-hmm you know, okay. and I, still, you know, I started, slowly started working on that. And like today, no, yesterday, I was cleaning up my frog. I'm still working on the back ones. I'm still trying to thin them out a little bit more and a little bit more because they're still a little bit too fat for my liking. But at least now I can get a clean exit out of the collateral groove in the back. And trust me, I had to work hard at that. And he was not amused because I was back there digging like you were, you know, like somebody was trying to carve up a side of beef. Um, yep. It was hard and, you know, I'd sharpen my knife and I had to get it in there. But at first I couldn't even get to the collateral groove because the frog was so fat and it had that bridge of material between what would be your buttress kind of and your frog. There was that wad of material, I call it. Yes. Just, yes, I have that. You know, the exit is just completely blocked by that wad of periopal. Yeah. And so it's like, hey, so, you know, again, we always go back to the why. And it's it like, bridge. I call it the bridge of what of periopal. So the two uh, are melded together and turned into, it's almost like a corset. Yeah. Yeah. So I started cutting through that too. Not all the way down at first, but I started taking my knife and making a V on either side and slowly chipping away at that as I was making my collateral groove wider, as I was taking, you know, trying to remove some of the frog on top to get rid of some of the dead stuff so I could get some growth. Okay. That bridge in the back, I figured out that bridge holding the collateral or the buttress to the, the wide frog, all of that is a corset that's keeping anything from moving and growing. And then, until we loosened some of that up, I found out nothing's really going to grow back there. Okay. So like, like she said, you know, taking down the frog's not going to hurt them. Okay. Let's don't, you know, if you, if you nick him, he's not going to die. Just stop. Okay. If you find yeah. a little bit of a lead, you know, they're not going to die. You know, I yeah. do it all. I get a little, I get a little aggressive and I'm like, oops, stop. <laughs> yeah. but, um, I put a little boo-boo cream on. He's fine. And then, um, so what I've been doing is slowly with my big fat back feet that we looked at in the very beginning the only way I finally started getting what she said is growth up above even though my heel bulbs are still a hair above the floor was by attacking this frog and that the, 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 the bars and that exit groove and just trying to loosen things up and get to healthy frog so that things could actually start growing and having a chance to move so okay. you've got this periopal cast on your foot it's over your frog it's down it's the side everywhere of the frog. it's on the top of the frog you got to slowly start getting getting the you know the guts to start paring away at it until you start getting to what looks like healthier frog which she said is kind of like a yellow waxy color yeah okay so should so, i put composites on them because i don't have a whole lot of foot to work with you can try that i tried it and because my heels in the back my fronts are still on. I have glue on octos. My fronts yep. are still on. 
my backs because they don't have the height and they are more curled in the back. There's four tabs on each side, the two back tabs on no matter what I tried one size shoe. Then I went down to the next size smaller thing and it was too big because his heels curl around still. And because they're low, I cannot get the back tabs to stay on. No, I don't care what glue you use. And I finally gave up. Okay. I cannot get the back ones to stay on. Now there are other types that I tried Octos. There are other companies out there. Maybe a different brand would, you know, do better, but I finally just gave up after $120 worth of Octos and the glue and me frustrated the horse pissed off you know I would glue them on I would clean if they were obsessively clean I would do everything it said and then the back tabs the first two back tabs would pop off immediately and then in two days the next two tabs popped off and from there as soon as he did anything more than walk he threw it off I gave up yeah. well because he walks so much I'm like uh, am I just throwing money away or is it worth the try yeah. Can you put him in some boots for part of the day while he's pacing? Not all the time. No. You won't tolerate no, there it? Is, there's nothing because I've gotten him boots. Uh, I've borrowed boots and whatever just before I spent the money on them. And they will, like, he gets big time rubs on the back of his heels. The for, He does have big feet. Like, his feet are big. So it's hard to find something that fits properly. Did you ever look at the Renegade boots? that don't touch the coronary band that yes, have a yeah. hinge. in in the back ah yes. i just because and he will circle like a rainer is that yeah. any sort of and that the torque it it will i can almost guarantee it will rub it's not he is he is honestly like nothing i've ever seen and if i did send linda the one picture of because he was on a five-week shoeing cycle and he will blow through full steel shoes like the whole one thing is like gone in five weeks that's how much he walks the one side of the shoe yeah well yeah wherever the left whatever it's that okay. you know front sort of pillar thing yeah it's gone so i'm thinking you know short of i don't think glue aren't you going to survive honey and i mean like i say I that know. just save your money and it was horrible the grief um yeah. But I'm thinking, you know, I was looking at the pictures and like he's got, like she said, this huge frog. So, you know, I don't think slowly paring away at that is going to, you know, do any damage to his soundness at this point. I mean, is he, what kind of footing is he on? Uh, in his in and out, he's on crusher and then he can. Small rocks. Sorry? Yeah. Yeah. Like there, it's not pea gravel. But it's it's more like like sort of road pack, let's call it. Okay. And then you know, or working surfaces sand, but really, I won't even ride them because it's you just it hurts your heart a bit, right? So, so I mean, there's no point. Like she said, start working on reducing the size and thickness of your frog. Yeah. You know, the basics, you know, keep the bars within reason, you know, in in their place. Um, don't bring the toe back any more than what the mapping requires because you're going to bind them up the other way. And then you're going to have, you're going to start creating, which I did before meeting Linda, I actually created the bullnose hoof. Yeah. Or I brought the toe back too much. So now the whole foot bent and he had a bullnose that took fun to get out of. Um, yeah. Oh, that was, so you, you'd want, you know, keep, try to keep, you know, from the ba basic mapping, his dorsal and his quarter walls in general ratio to each other. I mean, just do your basic mapping on him and then just try to clean that frog up and see how he does and if he starts um, making any progress that way. Any changes? Cool. Thanks, buddy. Well, yeah, definition of insanity. That was trying to do the same thing and getting nowhere. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know, you got to start somewhere. So, I mean, if you haven't really started, like she said, going after that frog a little bit, thin it up, way after the sides with a, a sharp knife. If you have to use the rasp, like I have a horse right now, her frogs were way over her, her walls. Um, I couldn't get a knife in there if I tried. I mean, it was just her first, the first time I had seen her. I literally took my file to her. Yeah, and filed right through the top layer of the frog, and I was like, "Okie dokie," 
and you know started shaving off the top outer layer of her frog and just said okay I want to see what she looks like in a couple days and I came back and you know she was fine so I came back with the rasp again and took a little bit more off until I could finally start doing more work with a knife because it was like concrete and she had been walking on it for so long because it was so tall and fat that I finally you know I had to take a rasp to it I was literally rasped it down yeah, I think I, like, I, um, he gets clipped and whatever and stuff, so, like, he's a pretty good dude that way, so I think I can Dremel it all down. I just got to get a Dremel. A Dremel but, or with the disc flap. I don't even know if a disc flap will work on it when it's that tough. Good luck. But like I said, okay. I took my rasp to it because I figured, hell, it's higher than the walls. I can get to it safely without hurting the walls. And I just put her up on the hoof stand and just filed away until I started you could see some of the dead stuff coming off on the floor and just went across the whole frog and then I tried to take some off the edges and called it a day and I thought okay I'll come back in a couple days and see what's happened yeah did it again you know and finally we're getting to the point where the frog is a hair below the walls now you know and I'm starting to finally be able to take a knife to it instead of the damn rasp because I'm working my way through the old 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 stuff Pack. Yeah. brilliant and- you can't, you know, it's not going to hurt. And like I said, it would take me so long to find blood on her. If I found blood, I probably would pass out. Um, <laughs> no, really. But on my guy, now every once in a while, I find blood up towards the apex because I finally got rid of all the periopal up there. But I still have it in the back. Okay. So every once in a while up towards the apex, I'm like, oops, you know, and I actually hit blood. So I know I'm through the periopal at that point because, you know, I've, I've just nicked him. Yeah. So, yeah. So you know when you've gone too far, and they're not going to die, and they're not going to be dead lame from a nick of blood. Trust me. Um, and you can try doing that and just see where you're at. And you know, you said it's moist out there. You said it rained. No, it finally did rain. So yeah, tomorrow will be my today's my day off, which is why I can be part of these chats. So yeah. tomorrow I'll get back at it. So literally working on his. I just literally while I'm sitting here, I ordered the black Evo rasp while, while I was thinking about it um, because I'll be having to use that thing on frogs and on the soles until we get rain. Cool. But you can, Thanks. you can file, you can file a frog. Thanks friend. Well, good luck. Like I said, been there, done that. And it, you know, I, it, it's taken so long, but I just kept after the basics of the mapping and I wasn't getting anywhere until I finally decided to tackle that big fat frog. Okay. that's when things started changing when I finally got the nut guts to, and made him just stand still long enough because he's a pain in the ass with his back feet um yeah. he can, and, and I finally was like okay I'm tackling these frogs and that's when I finally started seeing progress was when I finally just decided that was that was what I hadn't been addressing and I wasn't making any progress cool. so I thought, well go for it you know I don't know what happened to Linda maybe she lost her internet in the storm uh Linda <laughs> Linda messaged and said she, for whatever reason, got bumped off of the Zoom. She can't get back in. And she apologizes and said, keep talking as long as you want. We'll see you next week. Well, how do we end? <laughs> we just all leave. Oh, YouTube is going to go until somebody shuts it off. But I don't think any of us can. So we just right. exit the meeting and we're done. And who knows what happens to YouTube? <laughs> oh, but no. So, I mean, you can try doing something like that with him. Okay. You know, see how it goes. Cause I was looking at him and the first impression I got on his feet were like, wow, those frogs are way out of control. Oh yeah, they're wild. I was like, they're like they're a wild. soul. But like you said, they're very hard. And you, if you can't take a knife to it, take a rasp to it. Yeah. And then it's like going to the thought process. It's like, okay, so why exactly did he grow such a big frog? It, you know, and it's covering the soul. So am I even growing any soul? You are yeah, you can go down the rabbit hole. The reason the frog grows is because it didn't self-trim and no one was keeping up after it. And that's how they all get. You know, yeah, I guess in the wild, they wear it off on rocks or whatever. You know, and because his foot is run forward, there's so many factors that made it so that the frog is not self-carrying itself. So that's where we have to come in and all these farriers I know that never trim frogs. You got to see these frogs, and these hooves are such a mess. 
And, well, um, that's why I was like, because his, his hind feet are quite short. So I'm like, okay, are his giant frogs the only thing that's kind of saving him because he doesn't have shoes on? And he walks so much. Like, I don't know a short from getting rads, which right now financially is just not possible uh, to know what the hell's going on internally. Cause it doesn't look like he's got a whole lot of fro like a whole lot of foot. And then like his collateral grooves don't seem very deep, but are they all full of frog? Well, like, where are you again? I'm in Vancouver. Okay. So Canada. Like the, the, what was it? The, not the dorsal. What was the other shit? The, um, the hardener. Uh, yeah, we don't we don't have that. But I have put. Uh... I went on the website while we were talking, and I thought there was a Canadian distribution distribution for it. I oh, know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've put on uh, cry uh, cry or something. Anyways, it's it's like a like a hoof polish, but it's not, and it is an epoxy sort of thing. But he wears that right off because I've tried that before. And he okay. just like, it, 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 <laughs> if you see how fast I'll post a picture on the Facebook group, once I get out of the meeting and you'll see just like, he will wear through a steel shoe in five weeks, completely through. Like it'll be in half in one corner. That's how much he walks. It's, it's absolutely mind blowing. I believe it, you know, with, kind of like it sounds like one that walks the fence line continuously only he's doing it in circles yes and like he'll wear through rubber mats he will one place we had uh wood floors and then and he wore through the wood floors they had to replace the wood floors it is a neurotic tendency and that's like okay so you know yeah he's done it ever since he was little so who knows if behaviorally it can be out or is it does he do it because his feet hurt and like, he doesn't want to stand right it's like i i, I don't know their feet hurt that much so they lay down normally they don't walk on them more yeah one would think i know thing. <laughs> like, i mean not, unless he's got a screw loose and you know his he's not working i mean every horse i've ever seen that had foot pain just laid down yeah nope he just will continue to walk circles have you tried it's, cranking him a little bit <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Just nope. He'll walk circles, down. just slower, but he'll walk circles. But he maybe it's less wear. <laughs> maybe yeah. It, maybe you need to slow down the wear, how much walking he's doing too. Yep. You know, and you know, maybe it's a twofold approach: the psychological, and then also the actual feet themselves. I don't know. It's, I mean, it's it's nothing like I have ever. They I've ever experienced. Uh, they put it's... my dog on it. Um, <laughs> oh, he's not. He's neurotic as well. So, um, but no, I'm wondering if you can. You know, it, you can't put him in a stall because he does. He does the circles in the stall. Yep. And yeah, so like, that's where the, this in and out sort of tracks. It's like I want to call it a track system, but he's in an in and out. But it is like he basically can't do. 10 meter circles if he gets really wound up for whatever reason he'll do just rainer circles but otherwise he just spends his life walking up and down doing a serpentine well it's better than circles i guess at least Ex exactly so i'm trying to straighten him out so his body does look a bit better but it's also it'll even out the wear a little bit more on the hooves yeah you know but you know some kind of i don't know if you've tried the sedatives and it doesn't really work other than to slow them down, you know, slow them down even less wear for now. It, it is just sort of one of those things. It is what it is. And I know, you know, it's eventually his body will crap out on him because he's working, you know, really, really hard <laughs> for no reason. But if you were to Google map, you know, one of the places where I had him turned out when I thought he had a suspensory injury, pretty sure he dispensed, I don't think a complete, but anyways, um, it looks like crop circles from the Google Maps view. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Wow. It's it, it's it's nuts. I tell you, it's nuts. That's crazy. But he is the sweetest guy. He's well, like a golden retriever as a horse. I tried so it. I don't, I don't want to put him down. But you know, it's, but I, if I can get him sound, then he'll. He's better in work. 
Like when I can exhaust his brain, not his body, and he work, he loves to work, but I can't ride a lame horse. Like, it's just ethically for me. I'm like, this is just stupid. And then he's going to hate work, right? So, no. So, you can't really. It'll be interesting to see what happens when his feet get more restored and he's more normal. It might change everything. Who knows? I'm hoping. He's just, he's the sweetest guy and he feels like a million dollars. But it is what it is. That's why I'm here. Welcome to the club. Welcome well, to the class. Well, I don't know if anyone else agrees with me, but the first thing I would do would be start trying to get that frog a little bit more alive. That sounds reasonable to me. Because it was it was very large. It was very dead looking and it was very fat and it was taking over the whole back of the foot. Like it's, so, it's like damn near close to the toe. That's why I was like, this is so wrong. This well, is so wrong. Worry about where the toe is right now. Just leave that be and just go after, you know, cleaning up the frog. You'll probably eventually find the apex. It might be buried in there somewhere. So you'll eventually maybe find it if you're lucky to see where his toe is really. And if it's short right now, it might be normal when you find the true apex once you dig your way down through. Yeah, because I can't trim. Like, I literally can't even trim them because there's nothing to take other than my ugly frog and then like you called a little bridgy thing because I was like that's not normal but I'm like you know it's a bridgy thing but that's also helping the frog lock up the whole back of the foot and that my friend makes very much sense makes yeah, very me, very very to me that was just a periopal bridge that I couldn't see the purpose of letting it stay there um, doesn't look like it would, if you take it out, it's going to cause any kind of pain. I'm like, really? Um, and then, like I said, you know, get that out of there, disconnect the frog from the side of the, the, um, wall, get that disconnected so that they can work independent of each other, get rid of that bridge. And then just go after the frog for a while to see what happens. Okay. Done. I mean, that, that's what I would be doing on that foot. Cause I mean, at, at that point, you have nothing else to work with, really. No, no, I don't. Other than trying to, or I got somebody to put shoes on, but I don't, I do not want to go down that road again for right you know, now. You don't trim the frog up and you put the shoes on. It's not, you're not fixing anything. It's a band-aid. No. Yep. You're protecting the wear, but you haven't done anything also to start healing the foot. You are totally right. You know, I mean, it may grow a little bit and you could try it, but I would at least, if you're going to put shoes back on, at least clean the frog up still and do all that stuff before the shoes go on. I'm still, I, I think I'm going to leave them barefoot. And that's where with the, uh, with the octos, I was like, well, if they come off, they come off and I can put okay. them back on and I can put them back on. But if, if really he wouldn't even last a day in them, then that would drive me mental. Oh, it drove me mental. Trust me. And then I went and thought, okay, I ordered the wrong size. So I went and got the next size down thinking yep. they were just a bit too wide. They were even worse. Super. I was just like, oh, and then I had to go find the stupid things out in the pasture. You know, a five acre pasture, they're clear plastic. Mm -hmm, that was fun. <laughs> I found them, but I, you know, put in like three miles. Um, but I found them because I was like, I just paid how much money for these. Um, yeah. But no, I finally, I just told Linda yesterday, that's when I texted her and I said, I'm so frustrated. I'm like, I gave up. I, I give up on the glue ones. The front ones are still on. I'll leave them on until they come off. And then I said, I'm, you know, if your hooves aren't just the right shape, whatever, 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 they're not going to stay on. And it's a pain in the ass to put them on, to go through all that work, just to have them pop right off again. Totally. You know, so that's when I, I text her in complete frustration. I'm like, I'm not getting anywhere. <laughs> you know, but um, I, I did the octos on Dolly and, and um, the fit is critical. But right. I noticed, too, that the, the fourth tab broke loose. I had to re-glue those several times. One's all the and way to the back. The what? One's all the way in the back. Yeah, the ones that all four, all four feet. The back tabs yeah. popped off. Um, you know why? Because uh, those things I've convinced are designed for very contracted, curved in, false-heeled feet. 
where you have false heel that's there and pretty straighten up like um those horses seem to have those feet and when you have feet like ours that are low in the back and you know just curl in at the very very end and they're flared those boots were designed for a specific deformed foot yeah you you're probably right the more i looked at them i thought now i could get these on this other horse that is the opposite where he has got fake tall false heels he's curled in but the fake false heels are very straight and upright and you know real you know i could get i bet you i could get those octos to stay on him forever yeah dollies actually fit quite well uh, when I got the right size for them. And I had one heck of a time getting them off when I took them off when the farrier was coming. I mean, I had to work to get those buggers off. No, like wow. my friends haven't tried yet. The back ones weren't too hard once I got the nippers underneath the tab and pulled. Yeah, once I got something underneath, but trying to find something underneath to get them off. And some of the tabs were partially loosened. You could tell underneath when it was was cloudy. I knew there was something I could get under there. So I tapped a screwdriver under and pried right. under it and pried them off, and I got them oh. off, but it wasn't easy. They weren't coming off by themselves, I can tell you. But I mean, you know, getting them to stay on in the first place. So I've given up for now, at least with his feet, the way they, you know, they still they're flat and low, but right at the end they curl in. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not I'm not even going to do it anymore. I'm just going to keep doing what I've been doing, which is the slow and steady. And just keep going after the basic mapping, keep the frogs, keep tr- you know, trimming down them frogs in the bars, letting things have a chance to move and grow, and then just wait and see what happens. Yeah, so I'm like- leaving Dolly barefoot because the farrier did a hoof tester and she is not foot sore. She, she's stiff. All four legs are stiff. She's overweight. Um, and I figure if she's not foot sore, why am I doing with the shoes? Yeah. And I mean, the, you know, the heels... Yeah, but- the, either until I go to ride them on some of the footing we have here yeah yeah, yeah. I, I, I put them on I put them on her hinds hoping that her heels would grow and they actually wore down so I'm not bothering at that again on her hinds that's crazy yeah so like where, said, are, you, I'm, where are you guys at I'm in Pennsylvania I'm in okay. northeast Minnesota nice so, actually <laughs> I'm actually maybe 60 miles from the Canadian border. Well, lucky you <laughs> that you're not up here. <laughs> well, no, but the, I mean, that, you know, why don't you, why don't you just try doing something like that and maybe just do one frog a day, you know, cause of your knee, you know, and just try one frog at a time and just keep rotating your way through you know, and just see how he does and just be observant of, you know, how he's moving. Is he getting worse? Is he getting better? Is he staying the same? Just be observant of how he is after you start trimming the frog down a little bit. And and well, trim a little bit at a time so you're not doing anything drastic on him. Right. Hey. You know, okay, and like well. I said, those Evo rasps are handy. Um, like I said, I had the white one for years. I just literally ordered the black one while we were talking. Because with the drought, And I can't have horse. I mean, there's just no way to soak my horses, my customers, whatever. So I just have to manhandle my way through the soul. I mean, literally, I'm getting one hell of an arm workout. And I'm not young anymore. So I just decided the hell with this. And I just ordered the the heavy duty soul rasp, which will save me some elbow grease. You know, I mean, I can get it done with the white one, but I'm exhausted when I'm done. Cool, cool. Uh, yeah. yeah. Thanks for I your just, help, ladies. You're most welcome. Um, we've got a nasty thunderstorm going here. My power is flickered, so I think I'm just going to get off while the getting is good. I think she'd probably just all bail since whatever. And then yeah, just, probably. Linda gets nice her. chatting with you, ladies. Nice. Back at you until time. next week. How it goes. Will do. Bye. Bye.
done talking about for now, yeah. Oh, I gotta catch up on that rescue. Something ugly's happened there now. Oh, yeah.
check the charge when this thing reports. No, I was just using not on this, but I have to take it in and check the charge. I just put it to sleep. 